going live live all right we are live let's see what's that all right what's going on we're here with greg lappin luke mccoy brandon this is my good friend he's a farms instructor owns a jujitsu gym and uh here to take your questions on any of that stuff right? life yeah. where do babies come from do you want to introduce yourself who are you other than i think i think brandon than... put a little blurb up about me with a nice little picture but basically uh been in the arm profession for the last 20 years uh started as a law enforcement officer and uh moved on worked for uh the u.s government contracting various capacities and finished up doing that about three I years ago for uh, the U.S. government. And that's me I'm listening Oops, to. Sorry, I'm trying to grab this YouTube link so we can send an email out. Luke. Professionals and, uh, right here. Yeah, professionals. And uh, now I wear pajamas and flip-flops all day and choke people. I own a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Academy now. And I still freelance a little bit in the uh, security realm, if you will. So I still do some of that. Travel around a little bit here and there, but mostly short, what I would consider boutique uh, contracts. Cool. All right. So let's see. So it sounds like there's a lot of topic ideas, huh? Yeah, for sure. And and so every, so yeah, sorry, buddy. What? Dude, I can touch you. Quarantine. <laughs> anyway. Okay. All right. With that being said, I don't, I, I don't, I know people are like, oh, he's being vague. Listen to his background. I'm not being vague. I'm just trying not to waste everyone's time with talking about me. If you want to read about me, we can. We've got. You all can the go. Time in the world. You can go to the website. You can read about me. If you have specific questions about me, you can ask them. I'll address yeah. them. I'm not deliberately trying to be vague about my background. I'll tell anyone any thing that they want to know. Uh, I'm an open book. There we go. Kevin's got the first question. All right, you want to pop it on there? I'm just it's saying, there. Kevin. What you drinking, dude? You what, know what, what you I'm drinking. We're drinking? You, I mean, come on, you know what I'm drinking. Terror optics. <laughs> oh, Terror optics is here, my buddy. What's up, Terror optics? optics? You know who you really are. So basically, everybody from the gym's here. <laughs> <laughs> I know your real identity, Terror optics. Yeah. All right. Let's see. So we're gonna give away one of these hats. And some Vada, a Vada shirt. So Vada, Vada, Vada shirt. I'm saying Vada, Vada, Vada. Vada. Um, at the end. So if you ask a question, we'll just do that same thing, I guess. If you ask a question, you're entered to win a hat and a shirt. So, Any question? Any question? I don't care. Whatever. That's what we did last time, right? Yeah, yeah. Just to, just to clarify for people. So this person wants to wear jammies and flip-flops all day. Yeah. It's fun. The only thing that matters is that mustache. I can't, I'm, I'm not doing it's it. It's back. It's I'm back, KJ. It. It's back. It's staying until the quarantine's over. Mm -hmm. All right. So John wants to know what's the meaning of life since they can ask anything. What's the meaning <laughs> of life? Meaning of life is uh, <laughs> basically – Doing some aggressive cuddling daily with your best buddies and trying to beat the crap out of each other and then drinking whiskey. And that is the go. meaning of life. That sounds good. <laughs> All right. Terror optics. Is he going to be asking <laughs> questions? <as well? laughs> he wants to know hey. if Olive Point is better than Olive Point. Terror optics. Take your fingers off the keyboard. I know who you really are. And I'll see you when the quarantine's over. Uh-huh. All right, so what's your favorite gun? My favorite gun. I believe we just did a piece about this, yeah. didn't we? Yeah. Go to my YouTube channel if you want more details. But uh, which, What is wait, it? That was the best home defense gun. Yeah, we, we did a piece on this kind of, but my favorite gun is the one that I have on me, if that makes sense. Um if you have one on, you don't touch it. We can't touch guns. No, no, no. And I took it off before we came in here because we're drinking – whiskey um my favorite gun is a reliable nine millimeter pistol depending on on what i'm using it for 
if it's concealed carry, it's going to be of that size, you know, a mid-size to compact, subcompact, depending on what I'm using it for, what I'm wearing, time of the year. Uh, if it's a work gun, I'm going to move up in size to more of a full-size gun, higher magazine capacity. And uh, I carry Glocks, 19s and 17s. I also have a Glock 43 for real, real low visibility concealment. But all my guns that I own are Glock 9 millimeters. There you go. I don't know who this person is. <laughs> it's somebody from one of our groups, I guess. One of the, one of the groups, yeah. All right. Do you think they'll close gun stores? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. Can't answer that. Is that Magnum PI? <laughs> Look at him. Be a lot. Look at, look at that picture. It'd be a lot cooler if I had an old school uh, Ferrari three hundred eight and uh, wore a bunch of really super short nut hugger corduroy shorts. Yes, I'm chasing it with juice for KJ. Greg doesn't do a chaser. Will we ever have a concealed carry license throughout all states? Probably not. Don't yeah. think so. No, I don't. I don't think so either. I, I think I think states are going to reserve their right. You know, I don't think governors want to give up that sort of uh, power, if you will. No. Same with national reciprocity. Yeah. I don't ever see that happen. But hey, I'll take mine. Shut up in a wooden case. Don't know what he's what I'm taking from Ryan. In case I don't know what he's saying. Look at that hideous dude in black. Oh, hey, David Mayer, it's my buddy right there. <laughs> he's taking a couple vodka. It's my buddy right there. Hey, are you still holding strong? You still got that mustache going, bro? I bet he does. <clears throat> what is this one? Have you seen the levels of inquiries with personal defense increase in your training due to COVID-19? It's a good question. That is a good question. Yeah, massively. Um, as a matter of fact, I've had a lot of people hit me up and contact me that I know are fairly anti-gun. And, uh, you know, gun sales have gone up, uh, inquiries into, into firearms training and, uh, you know, Concealed carry training have definitely increased. And, uh, you know, if my opinion is kind of too little too late. You know, you, you don't prepare for this overnight. You don't gain these skills in one eight-hour course. It, it takes just like anything you want to be good at. You know, you don't learn to become a brain surgeon over one eight-hour course. You know, it takes months, years to be – skilled enough to use stuff like this in a in a real no bullshit lethal force encounter where someone else is trying to kill you but yeah to back to your question yes the inquiries have definitely increased and i don't know I kind of chuckle. hey luke let's uh let's we're gonna throw up underwood real quick all right guys first uh first sponsor for the video is underwood ammo and just just so everybody knows we, uh, Luke and I, we, we maintain pretty close relationships with all the sponsors and we don't, we don't take sponsors from just anybody. So these are companies that we, that we work with, that we know, that we trust, that we back. These guys are awesome if you don't know them and they're, they're really heavy on self-defense ammo. You can check them out on underwoodammo.com. And actually that round that, that we have up there in the center is, is one that they have been pushing a lot. It's a new, like, what, what, Luke, like a new new style or new method yeah, for I don't know much about it personally but huh? you you have some um I'm waiting to get yeah, some Yeah, I have some. Out. Yeah, it's um it's supposed to be better than than a typical standard hollow point and we'll we'll have to we'll have to do some uh we'll have to do some articles or something. We got to do some gel tests or something with it. Huh? Will was talking about testing some ammo with ballistic gel. So I'm like, yeah. And I don't have any ballistics gel. I know you can make it, but <laughs> yeah, we'll have to try it out. So, all right. What did I see over here? What's your thoughts on frangible rounds in a daily carry gun? Not a good idea. Um, I was fortunate enough to uh, attend the the DEA's firearms instructor course, uh, which is probably for the federal government, one of the longest and most difficult firearms instructor courses, believe it or not. It's basically, it's a month long. 
And one of the benefits of going to the course is I got to, uh, we got to sit down and meet with the head <laughs> firearms, basically scientist who tests and does the data on all projectiles, every caliber type of projectile. Frangible rounds are designed to disperse and dissipate on impact of steel, of ballistic steel. That way we can use them very, very close on steel targets and we can use them inside shoot houses. That's what they're designed for. And believe it or not, frangible rounds break up less and don't mushroom at all on uh, flesh, on muscle tissue. Even if they hit bone, they go straight through, shatter the bone, go straight through, and they create a little tiny hole. Right. They don't mushroom at all. They don't break apart <laughs> into pieces and affect the other part of the body. And when we're talking about pistol rounds, there's only a primary wound cavity in a pistol in, in, in a pistol gunshot. There's no secondary wound cavity like in a rifle gunshot due to the lack of velocity and pitch and yaw in the actual projectile. So when we're talking about pistol projectiles, pistol related velo muzzle velocity, the only part that does damage is the part of the projectile that actually touches flesh. So the more mushrooming of that projectile we can get, the better it is. So uh, frangible rounds, you'll have massive over penetration. They're going to go straight through people hmm. making basically little pinholes uh, and they're not as good for stopping them. Plus now you're dealing with an over penetration issue. So don't use fr frangible for uh, defensive carry at all. Good question. Yeah. I'm learning stuff. So that was cool. That was why wow, I just was serious for a right? second. Well, okay, let's, uh, I don't like serious questions. Come on, right. let's go back. Um, <laughs> can you get a concealed carry license off a computer by taking a test? Yeah, I think some states. Is it Virginia that allows that or where you can just do an online certificate and get it? Right. No, you still you, you still have to submit an actual application. Right, right, right. But that like has is for your, your you don't have to go to a, an actual course. Some of them let you take it online, right? Um, I don't, I don't know that all the, all the states change so frequently. I don't know if they still have in person or not. Yeah. Um, I think um so I know not long you, ago in like Alabama, you didn't have to go to any course. You could literally walk right. up to the county courthouse, fill out a piece of paperwork right there, sign it and walk away with your, really? yeah. You all, yeah. There's open carry in Louisiana, open carry in Florida or no, no. Right. No, no open carry in Florida. Nope. Thoughts on open carry? Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I'm not no. a fan. I, I don't. I, I don't dress tactical. I don't wear Molly. I don't wear kill them all. Let God sort them out. Shirts. Just um, jujitsu shirts. Yeah, just jujitsu shirts. <laughs> uh, you know, so I, I'm not a big fan of advertising that I have a gun on me. That's my, That's 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 for me. For me yeah. to know. I'm looking forward to the PSA dagger. Yeah, I, I am. am. Yeah, it's like a Glock 19. I don't know what that is. It's, I'm not. A, I'm not a gun guy. Believe it or yeah. not, he is not a gun guy. Yeah, it looked. Uh, it looked nice at Shot Show. It's Palmetto State Armory's Glock 19. Okay, replica. I've seen it. So I'm interested in getting one because we'll probably get them right to review. So we'll see. Dewalt. Yeah. Out with a badass new hammer too. Yeah, yeah, it's a good tool, huh? Yeah, mm -hmm. got a grip on it. And swing <laughs> it. Uh, Jameson and Jucifer IPA from a local brewery here, gnarly barley, in Hammond, Louisiana. All right, Terror Optics says thanks. <laughs> Buffalo, New York. I Where got a buddy who's a uh, police chief up in Buffalo for a while. What, what happened to that? Did I scroll what too did, far? Yeah, you scrolled way down, bro. There we go. Uh, Buffalo, New York. Hey, from Buffalo. Mine just shipped out today. Talk about fast. Don't know what you're talking about, Chris. Hey, folks, what on him? The strength. What are you guys doing during quarantine? Here, do this one. Oh, Here. you got that one? What are we doing to keep your skills sharp? So... That's an excellent Shameless plug again. Yeah. There's we, uh, we just did a video on what can you do, uh, during quarantine dry mm -hmm. fire, but, and that, that's an excellent <clears throat> question. And I, I, you know, it is hard during quarantine, especially if you're avidly going to the gym or, you know, meeting up with people or going to the range. Uh, 
it's it's easy to kind of let your mental facilities kind of get you down and not train but there's a lot of stuff you can do in your home and first and foremost is physical training right get up in the morning every morning crank out push-ups sit-ups air squats you know uh crunches do them every morning and if you're out of shape and you haven't been working out use this time now to start it and you don't have to start crazy go do 10 10 of each next week do 20 next week do 30 uh, and then dry fire. You mm-hmm. can you can dry fire. Uh, you know you can go as crazy as setting up you know targets on the wall in your garage and go out there and dry fire. Or you can set up a little room, go back in your closet or your bathroom and dry fire for two minutes at a time. But um, what are we doing? Are you- well, I took like a half a day class with you the other day, <laughs> so that's what I was doing. We, you know, unfortunately, we're probably not. Yeah, we're not the. Um, the, the, you know, we're, I guess we're lucky because we've been shooting and I I've been training still pretty much daily, either lifting or doing plyometrics or training jujitsu with, with my main training partner. And then we've been going to the range. We went out and yep. shot some long range the other day out to about a yep. thousand yards meters, sorry, a thousand yep. meters. And then we did some pistol shooting the other day. So we're kind of fortunate, but I own my own gym. So I can go there whenever I want and I, lights in here. Yep, and I have my own, well, I don't own my own range, but I have access to my own private range. So we're kind of fortunate. I mean, a lot of outdoor ranges are still open too. So, yeah, I mean, all of, all of the public ranges here are closed. Oh, really? Yep. Okay. Well, yep. That. If, they're part, if they're part of a gun shop, the gun shop is still open, but the ranges are all closed. Hmm. Okay. My, yeah. my club is still open. It's an outdoor range. Um, so yeah, yeah, sorry, Matt Hennessy. Oh, you're here. You're up in New well, Where in New York are you too? Like I've been taking my, both my kids out, um, part of their homeschooling that I'm doing with them during this quarantine and the school being shut down is, is about every two or three days we're going out and doing rifle marksmanship training with their 22s. Cool. And my kids are young, eight and five. So, so did you see Bethany said hello from Underwood? No, I didn't. Where is she? She said, great time to jump on. Fantastic hat, Brandon. Oh, thanks, Bethany. Bethany. Oh, look at that. Bethany has the same last name as Underwood Ammo. What a coincidence. Interesting. (laughs) (laughs) The FBI Um, would call that a clue. So (laughs) your uh, their tools, but what do you think of Springfields since you carry Glocks? I actually quite like the Springfields. Um, my personal favorite would be the, the XDM series again in nine millimeter, uh, varying sizes for varying, you know, jobs, type of dress, time of year, climates, depending on where you live. But I, I do quite like the Springfield XDMs. Let's see what else we can find here. What round is great for devastating human tissue? (laughs) So what kind of, what here, what? What rounds do you carry? And I know I know the answer, but what do you carry? So I carry. Uh, well, now I'm I'm kind of crossing over to um, the G2. Was that spear? I think it's spear. Okay. Again, I, I can't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure it's the spear G2, nine millimeter. I was carrying the Hornady critical duty in my full size guns and critical defense in my compact gun. Okay. Uh, and those, those are good rounds as well. What makes you switch? The switch of my agency switched rounds okay. to the G2. So I'm just keeping things consistent across the board. So the real question is what made the, the agency switch? <laughs> <laughs> they got a good deal. <laughs> no. So, you know, uh, that's actually, that's a good question, Ren. So, just because I'll say this, just because a law enforcement agency is carrying a certain round does not necessarily mean that it's the best round for a civilian as a concealed carry law enforcement typically have to engage people through barriers a lot more than civilians mm-hmm. do. So through vehicle glass, windshields, vehicle bodies, etc., cetera. Um, walls for SWAT teams, etc. And the G2, 
was getting better better uh, barrier penetration on windshields than than some of the okay. Hornady um, stuff, and that was one of the main reasons. Yeah, good good points though, because no, a lot of people wouldn't consider that stuff. Yeah, just because you know, and and I say this a lot, just because you know, Navy SEALs are carrying something or SWAT teams are carrying something doesn't necessarily mean it's the best. It's the best for them and their the best for their application. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Cool. We're gonna be shooting through windshields soon. Yep. With that, did, um, with that little thing. Yeah. Pretty soon. Greg, did you talk about holsters at all? What what kind of holster you carry? I was looking at this one here. I didn't. That's good. So, um, who asked that? Oh. I know. Do we know that guy? Kevin, talk about a fielded softball question there, Kevin. Thank you. Um, you know, it's a good question. And and for me, carrying a gun goes beyond the holster even. A lot of people will carry a good gun and a good holster, and it's still the gun's kind of – the best way I can put it is kind of sloppily carried prints real bad or hangs or sags or they say it's very uncomfortable. So for me – uh, belt selection is a real huge important part to kind of the whole system of concealed carry. No, oh, yeah. Uh, having, having a dedicated, um, you know, gun belt. And now whether you want to get a nylon, quote unquote, tactical style belt or a, you know, leather belt from, I mean, a lot of companies. I, yeah. I personally have the Magpul Tejas belts. Uh, in brown leather, black leather, depending on what I'm wearing. I have some thinner ones so I can wear them with a suit and tie, but they're reinforced, designed to carry the weight of a gun in a magazine. But going to the holsters, uh, low profile Kydex holsters without any sort of additional retention. Um, I think if to name names, my two current, like in my main stable right now, is I carry my Glock 19 in a uh, Raven Concealment Eidolon. And I carry my Glock 43 in a G-Code Incog. Cool. Nice. The um, the question right below has Chris. I don't know if, Greg, I don't know if you want to get into this, but I mean, this is from a, you know, if someone's carrying a firearm, if they're, you know, trained in other methods of self-defense, it's the whole mentality of, do you get involved in a confrontation or not? And it sounds like what Chris is asking is to sounds like to save someone else or yeah. other people. And of course it depends on the situation, but um, do you have any opinions on that overall? He does. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I've been he here twice already, but um, is there a certain, do I have a certain story? Um, oh, there's a story. All right. About the school stuff and whatever. Um, school stuff you're talking to the principal oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Into, like yeah I, you know yeah that goes into it or like just stuff we talk similar to that yeah stuff. whatever this is it sounds like it'll be good uh, chris no i mean that that's an excellent question and the which is the right way there is no right way you know i i i can't give you the answer there's there's no right way the right way is what you decide to do at that exact very moment and um, one of the best quotes that, that I was told coming up through, through this was, uh, and I think it was a quote from general Patton. The best thing you can do is the right thing. The second best thing you can do is the wrong thing. And the worst thing you can do is nothing. Right. So be, should you be a sheepdog? I can tell you right now. And I, I am still a law enforcement officer. Uh, I still carry a badge. I, I work for mm -hmm. a, uh, regional SWAT team here. If I'm with my family, if I'm with my kids or my wife, nobody else matters, plain and simple. And until they are 100% in safety, nobody else matters. And you're on your own. That is my main concern. Now, if I'm by myself and I see something, will I intervene? Yes. Have I intervened in the past in, in real world? Yes, I have. But you have to understand too, that I'm, I'm coming from 20 years of doing this for a living and my, my skill set and my mentality and my training and my real world experience are a lot different than most. 
do I feel a duty to act? Yes, I do. And that's why I chose the career path I did because I do have a, a duty to act. I do feel that personally. A lot of people <clears throat> who are civilians ethically feel that way as well. Could you act and possibly cause more damage? Maybe. And can you live with that personally? Can you live with that financially, legally? I, I don't know. Could you not act and things work out better? Maybe. Could you not act and things work out worse? There are so many split second ways that this can go. And the best thing that I can, if I, if I were to offer you any advice or anyone out there listening to this on this question for advice, the best thing that you can do is make sure that you are trained and that you are prepared physically, mentally, prepared equipment wise. And, you know, make the decision based on the facts that you have in front of you at that time. That's, you know, be trained, be ready, be ready not to use them, be ready to use them. But no right. that. yes. Sorry. Sorry. I didn't mean to cut it off. No, problem. Um, you can, you can do another question. I'm, I'm going to type a question and then put it up as a banner. And I think it'd be a good one for you, but you, Luke, you can, you can go to another one or, or if he's <coughs> anything up with that. Hey bro, jujitsu is good for anyone who carries a firearm, period. No life skills are better than defensive. Yeah, so not, not really a question, but I know there's yeah, something there. Yeah, absolutely. No, <laughs> jujitsu is good for anyone and everyone. And uh, I lived in Abu Dhabi for four years in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, the UAE adopted Brazilian jujitsu as their national sport. Uh, oh, heck probably 15 years ago, they instituted in all their public schools and their public schools from uh, grade school all the way up through high school. Uh, the physical education is jujitsu a couple days a week for all the kids. And it has done wonders for their, their society and their, their next generation. It's, 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 it's cool. Jujitsu is a superpower. It'll change your life. It'll change your life. You like me? no joke. <laughs> And if you don't believe it's a superpower, just walk into your local gym and ask them to show you. Mm -hmm. So, so my question will lead into this and we have, I, Luke, I'm sure you see this thing a lot too with people who will say that they carry a gun and that's all that they need and they're prepared for everything. And this whole mindset, just because they have a gun, right? And whether they're proficient with it or not is, an entirely different story. But so the question is for, for Greg, what, what level of importance would you put on physical fitness for people who carry a firearm? Not just everybody in general, but people who yeah. carry a firearm, how, how, how much uh, prepared in the realm of their actual fitness should they be to, I guess, um, uh, you know, accompany the fact that they, carry a firearm because things can go wrong things do go wrong and people don't think about those scenarios a lot so like what if you know what if you get in a hand-to-hand -hand thing with with the person that you're right. trying to defend against are, are a lot of people prepared for that you know that's an awesome question and actually this is this is something that's really uh i would say near and dear to my heart right this is this is something that i've come into contact with uh professionally you know, as a police officer, um, this is something that I've done as a trainer and taught people. And there is a big misconception, right? Do you need to be physically fit to be a good shooter? No, you don't. Do you need to be physically fit to be involved in a combative shooting, whatever term you want to use, combative shooting, self-defense shooting? Yes, you do. A lot of people don't understand what a you know, a minute in a life and death situation, whether you're shooting at each other or fighting with each other is like, and, you know, you can be massively, massively out of breath without having your ever having to put your hands on someone in a life and death physical encounter in a gunfight because of all the adrenaline dump and believe it or not, all the movement and the balance and the leaning and where you're leaning and where you're aiming and the concentration. And if you're not physically fit and you don't have a good cardiovascular fitness built up and anaerobic fitness built up, you're just, your breath rate's higher, your heart rate's higher, 
it's going to be harder for you to aim and focus in on those sites. It's going to be harder for you to smoothly ma manipulate that trigger. It's going to be harder for you to explode out of positions and get behind cover or lean out and pie around cover. So fitness is, is a massive importance for defensive shooting. Now, add that into civilian concealed carry, and I think it becomes even <clears throat> more important because how do most civilian shootings occur? Well, why do they occur? We have to look at that. Carjackings, armed robberies, right? If I'm, and th this is something that I kind of go around and talk about and when I've taught courses in it, and I used to teach an entangled gunfighting course. And what I mean by entangled gunfighting, it's, it was a course based on point blank and contact distance engagements. Point blank meaning that we can go out, we can shake each other's hands. That's, that's point blank, right? Also, I can punch you in the face from that same distance, right? <laughs> and then contact means we're actually physically in, a, in an engagement, in a grappling. In civilian shootings, typically, I've got to approach you to take your wallet. I've got to approach you to take your car. Um, if I'm close enough to you. We were just talking about that. Yeah, we were just talking about this. <clears throat> if I'm close enough to you, and, and I'm not trying to be boastful here. <laughs> if I'm close enough to shake your hand or ask you for a cigarette or your time and you let me get that close, if you try to take a gun out, I'm going to physically take it from you. I'm going to beat you to death with it. And I'm not, I'm not saying this as like a hypothetical situation. Like you're not going to get the gun out. I'm going to take it from you and I'm going to fucking kill you. Plain and simple. Now, are most bad guys like me? No, they aren't. But, you know, the, the story we were talking about with Luke, um, I was involved in a combative situation over a gun with someone who is probably 50, 60 pounds lighter than me, who was a drug addict, who was not physically fit. And it was the fight of my life over this guy with no training. And I could probably pick up and, and, and shoulder press over my head. But this guy was so hopped up and he was so hell-bent on, on winning and fighting. It was the fight of my life. Now, if that happens to me being physically fit and training daily, what's that going to be like to a civilian who doesn't train? And I don't mean civilian in a negative connotation, guys, at all. I'm just trying to discern against a, a, an armed professional, someone who carries a gun for a living. They get paid to carry a gun on their hip versus someone who doesn't. Right. Um, but what that's what's that going to be like with someone who doesn't train physically at all? You know, guys will tell you, and Luke will tell you when he started training with me. Uh, if you don't train 30 seconds of grappling, I mean, you're going to be throwing up. You're going to be passing out. You're going to be literally whiting, mm -hmm. blacking out. So yes, long story short, Brandon, <laughs> physical fitness is is very very important. All right, that was good, David Mayer. Can you explain the importance of carrying a handheld light for concealed carriers? He loves his lights. He does love his lights. <laughs> um, <laughs> carrying a white light whether it's a handheld or, or mounted to your pistol is, is pretty vitally important as most confrontations happen in low light or at nighttime. Do I carry a white light on my body, on my person all the time? No, I don't. If I'm going out at night dedicated, I will put a white light on either on my pistol or um, a handheld in my pocket. If I'm working for sure, I have a white light both mounted on my pistol and a spare handheld in my pocket. Um, so it is important depending on what you're doing. Uh, do I stress it? Do I carry one all the time? No, I do not. Uh, but I'm old and boring now and I stay at home and I'm in bed by like nine o'clock. Uh, I don't go out to dangerous places and do dangerous stuff a whole lot anymore. So kind of there you go. my personal opinion. Just as a reminder, we're giving away – this hat and a Vada shirt to anybody that asks a question. So, yeah. No one will want the hat. They might want the shirt, but. Well, I'll keep the hat. Then. With the shirt yeah. being said, you can't buy the shirts. No. They, they're only, you can only, we've done it. We've always done a thing that you have to attend a class to, to get a shirt. Okay. But so that's pretty special. Consider yourself lucky. Yeah. 
Is someone stealing mega chips? All right, let's see what other questions we have in here. Hey, how about this one? Go. Frank How'd that work for that guy uh, in that video the other day? Juan, Cody, I like that uh, I like that tracking photo, bro. It's a good tracking picture. Uh, how do you convince them? Man, I don't know. You know, I've had this, this argument with folks before. Uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, I'll talk to people that are afraid to carry around chambered. And I'm like, all right, I want you to hold your breath. And you hold your breath until my pistol magically <clears throat> discharges the round that's in the chamber. Ready? Go. Time me. Ready? You still timing me? Right? Because I've carried a gun basically for 20 years, you know, concealed, always with a round chambered, and it's never, never magically gone off. And, you know, hopefully they just believe that. The next thing you can do is go out to the range with a pro timer. Right, pro timer doesn't lie, and do draw do draw for draw with them. It's not as fast. Period. I don't care what kind of whiz bang Israeli course they went to. It's not as fast because by yeah. the time you are racking your slide and the time it takes you to actually cycle the slide, I'm going to fire two rounds on you. And 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 show the show them like real life scenarios. There are plenty of videos out there. Luke's got a bunch on his site. I do a lot of articles on these and. Uh, you'll see people on, on video surveillance video struggling to chamber around mm -hmm. and they get shot. And yeah. it, it happens uh, more, a, a lot more than people think because you don't see that kind of news in your face all the time. Um, but it's, it's not like it doesn't happen. And, and the seconds or split seconds that you have to actually get the gun ready on target, it, it's incredible how fast these things happen. Absolutely. And that's a good point. You know, the average person can fire around every 0.25 seconds, every quarter of a second, the average person can fire. We, in the end, we call them splits, mm -hmm. right? Faster twitch people, faster shooters, more experienced shooters have splits of real, you know, like high end shooters, 0.15 second splits to 0.2 second splits. So even faster than a quarter of a second, uh, guys are training to get pistols out and engage a threat. You know that you hear about that magical one second or under one second draw. Hmm. So when you want to talk about drawing, racking the slide, I typically, I typically have about a 0.68 to a 0.72 first round hit from draw stroke. So now add a split, right? 0.2. Let's say let's say I'm slow at 0.75, and let's say I have a 0.25 split. So now you're talking about basically at you know 0.75 what? At a minute, I'm not a mathematician. Carry the two, right? At a minute ten. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Good. I like it. I, <laughs> at one second. At one second, right? We'll go with that. At one second. So 0. 0.75 at one second. No, 0. 0.75. Yeah. 0. 0.75. Yeah. At one second, I digress. <laughs> so at one second, basically, I'm firing two rounds on you. Right. At one second, I'm getting two rounds on you. Luke, I'll, I'll call my friend Eric to do the math. Remember that? There you yeah. go. Where's yeah. my calculator? We had to call him to, when we built a tower of ammo. We're Dude, like, I hurt people like, for a living. Do I don't do this, math. How do we build a pyramid? <laughs> I'll call him and I was like, <laughs> we have this many boxes. How do we build a pyramid? Exactly. Oh, man. Speed is it fine. Was... Accuracy is everything. I agree. I agree. Accuracy is extremely important. Not everything, though. But yeah. very, very, very important. Was this something? Wait, Oops. wait. No. We both just clicked on one at the same we'll, time. We'll go, back to, we'll go back to hers. Let's see. Yeah. Manual external safety on a carry pistol. We were just talking about that. Yeah. I think in one of the videos, right? Yeah. No, I, I don't agree with the manual external safety on a reliable striker fired gun, which is what I think is the best style of pistol for people to be carrying. Um, you know, if you're carrying a single action gun, you'll, yeah, you have to have a manual external safety uh, on that. But if you're carrying a good, reliable striker fired gun, there's no need for a manual external safety. And the only thing that it's hurting is you, because unless you train with it very, very regularly, you're going to need it. You're not going to click off safe. You're going to try to press that trigger and you're going to hear the loudest noise you ever heard in gunfight. Click, click. That's the one I was going to click on. Yeah, I know. I noticed you. Uh, so 
that one? So my take on that is that it's it's a gun that you carry, so it should be something that you're training with regularly. So you should be continuously rotating yeah. the rounds that you're using. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. Is my thought on that? If it's if if it's loaded and just sitting there, and you carry it and you use it every day, and you keep that same round loaded, you're not you're not practicing with it. And I think that it's it's very important too. And some people some people actually have two of the same gun, and they'll keep one loaded, and that's the one they carry, and then they practice with another one. But what if the one that you carry has some type of problem? You got to practice with with that gun that you carry. Absolutely. Um, so. Jessica's been on for every single one. That's nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. This is this is our third one, and this is her third time. She's like a super fan. Now. Yeah. So yeah. she said, "How long?" Um, as, as a standard for like our qualifications, when you're talking about an agency thing, and they would err on the side of 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 safety, probably rotating more because litigation could be attached to a shooting with those rounds every six months we shoot our duty ammo out and replace it with brand new duty ammo but like brandon said you know that is the gun you should be training with and just because you're carrying a glock 19 don't have your carry glock 19 and your training glock 19 you can have both but you still need to shoot your carry glock 19 because <laughs> next thing you know the the slide lock lever spring breaks while it's sitting there in your sock cabinet one day and now you're getting involuntary slide lock, right? You need to know these things. So you yeah. definitely shoot with it. You don't need to shoot your, your good duty loads every time you go out to the range, but every six months would be a good recommendation. Shoot those duty rounds out of that magazine and out of your spare magazine, and then just replace it with something new. Now, also on that fact, people will go out and buy the newest whiz bang defensive duty carry round and load it right in their gun and go carry it. You need, anytime you change rounds in your gun, anytime, you need to go shoot at least a magazine, if not two, of that new duty round mm -hmm. out of that gun. Because there are some rounds that don't like to chamber as much in, in certain guns. You need to shoot it to make sure it's reliable. Right. And guys, we just switched over to Better Holsters, the sponsor for this segment and you if you've been on here before you've seen them but i've become a huge fan of better so be sure to check them out betterholsters.com that's luke you got you got one of them there or no i do uh let's see the one for the so house. this is the this is the light tuck that i've been using in my mm -hmm. journey to appendix carry this is this is the style that i'll typically use so they have both they have gun belts uh, they make some really awesome stuff. Really cool people. So yeah, I don't have it. Uh, Ill, Ill prepared. Well, anyway, Luke's got one too. So it's here somewhere. It's somewhere. are you are you enjoying it? I need the one that'll carry the red dot. I, I'm gonna get it for you. You said it was on the way, but uh, it's it's no. still. Do you have it yet? No. Then I it's on it. the way. Okay, it's on the way. Then. <laughs> But no, I like the whole shirt. It's all Kydex. It's got the claw metal clip. It's nice. And yeah. the design looks kind of cool. So there's that. But nobody sees that anyway. So laser grips on a gun? Laser grips. So I personally don't run visible lasers. With that being said, I've seen the benefit of them. <laughs> I had a partner while well, I was a policeman in New Orleans and he ran a, a Crimson Trace laser grip on his Glock. I did not run a laser. My partner couldn't shoot for shit. <laughs> couldn't hit the, yeah, I know. Couldn't hit the side of a barn. And I was a very, very good shooter and I was shooting competitively at the time. And we'd get out and have to draw down on someone or, you know, and I'd, draw down and issue commands and the person would take off running and he draw down and put that laser on them. And they would stop dead in their tracks. <laughs> so does it have an effect? Yes, it does have an effect. If people see that laser on them, as far as does it actually help in defensive reactionary shooting? I think if you're really looking for that laser, 
your all your natural point of aim and your natural draw stroke and the movement that should be programmed into you is already already behind the power curve if you're looking for the laser. So personally, I don't run one because I don't think it's that important of a tool, but I don't think it's a bad tool either if you train with it. All right. Just to, just to show Jessica, this, this is the light tuck yeah. that I was just yeah. talking about. So it's the full Kydex. The claw is an optional feature and it just helps to pull the, um, pull the grip down closer to your body. Uh, like I like Sean Hutton. We're getting there next. All right, Frank all right. Rose wants to know what the hell a is sock a sock cabinet. cabinet? <laughs> yeah, you know, cabinet. You keep your socks in. <laughs> all right, uh, best Sean. Re re response for why I carry an extra mat. Yes, dude, I love this question. All right, um, I carry a spare mag with my pistol everywhere I go. If I'm carrying my pistol, I'm carrying a spare mag, and here's my reasoning. You know, even if I'm clearing Glock 19, Glock 19, 15 rounds in the mag, one in the pipe, right? Do I really think that I'm going to need more than 16 rounds in a, in a defensive shooting? Well, no, but I'll caveat that with a story at the end. The answer is no. I don't think I'm going to need more than 16 rounds. But I ask people, what's the most unreliable part of the whole defensive carry system? First is the shooter. We're, we are the most unreliable part. The second is the magazine. I, I ask people, go out to the range. And you go out to the range and you shoot. Say you go out there and you shoot for an hour. How many times in that hour do you drop your gun on the ground in the dirt? Most people say, well, I don't ever. Yeah, good. You shouldn't. How many times do you drop those empty magazines in the dirt when you're doing reloads? A bunch. Mm -hmm. Then people come home and they clean their gun and they lube it and make it all nice and pretty and then they take the same old dirty mags they may bang them on their leg or bang them on the table and whoo, blow into them and they take the same dirty mags and they put them in their gun so now we're not only taking the most unreliable part of that gun of that system but now we're dropping in the dirt we're dropping on the floor we're not cleaning them as much right so magazines inherently and i've seen this on the range training thousands of people over the years magazines inherently malfunction and break way more often than the firearm does. So I would hate to need that to defend my life or my loved ones. And all of a sudden the base plate on a magazine falls out and all my bullets go all over the ground and I don't have something to reload with. So my main reason I carry a spare mag is for reliability issues. And as a redundant measure, to have extra rounds if my primary magazine breaks or malfunctions, or I have a catastrophic malfunction in my gun and I need to scuttle that magazine, dump that magazine, not because I need extra rounds. That being said, pistol bullets, even good duty carry, defensive carry, hollow point, you know, whatever you want to call it, rounds are not very good at stopping human beings. And I mean stopping them immediately so they can't do you any more harm. All right. There have been uh, a couple shootings that I've been involved in where the person needed six, seven, eight rounds. I'm talking good, accurate, combat accurate rounds before they went down. Talk about six rounds, seven rounds, eight rounds for one person. Now he's got an accomplice. So carry a spare mag. Good question, Sean. And have training mags instead of. Yeah. And that's the other thing. You know, I have, I have training mags too that. But same thing, going back to you Brandon's still have to thing, use them, right? you got to yeah. use your carry mags and make sure you don't have to drop that one on the ground, though. You can use your training mags. Fair enough, right? Yeah. yeah. Get some extra mags. Um, hey, Luke, do you have a uh, do you have an opinion on this single retention or double single clip or double on a pennis carry mag, yeah. uh, holster? Um, so for my Glock 19, it is that that uh, holster has two metal clips. They're discrete carry concepts clips, um, but for my for my like Hellcat and the Glock forty three, so I guess smaller pistol, smaller holster. I have single clip, so um, there's my answer for that. So bigger gun, I've got two clips on it. Smaller one, I've got a single. Um, yeah, I don't like the plastic Fami Fami clips. 
like um, the discrete carry concept clips or a metal one is what I prefer. Yeah, I agree. What about you? Well, I, I don't have a lot of appendix carry experience. I've been I've been using this one with the Hellcat. And that yeah, so, that, I mean it stays in place. Good. Clip, right. I, I haven't moved around and this is this is a beefy wide clip and it's and it's the metal clip. So I and haven't before I switch to the uh, discrete carry concept clips on my Henry holster for the Glock 19, it had belt loops, which I like those as well. Um, yeah, so belt loops, clips, metal clips. So yeah. I prefer and recommend. All right, what else do we have in here? A couple of questions. I'm up further. How you guys recommend cleaning or maintaining your Glock mags? Do you clean your mags? Yes. So you just take them apart, wipe them down? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, I clean my mags. Um, <laughs> Luke, do you clean your mags? <laughs> What's that? Luke, do you clean your mags? Hmm. <laughs> no, I probably should. <laughs> uh I that's clean why, my mags. No, I stretch my springs. That's why I borrowed Will's mags right. when we were shooting, right, right, so I right. could drop his on the ground yeah, and, and mine. Then take mine. Yeah, I, I clean my mags and I stretch my springs. So you pull them out. Mm -hmm. You stretch the springs. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So tell us the reasoning. So magazines that stay loaded are actually okay. Right. Because the springs are compressed and stay compressed. Magazines that are constantly loaded and unloaded start to um, not necessarily weaken, weaken, but get jammed down. Right? Okay. It, you'd think it would be the opposite. Right? Right. Um, so whenever I clean my magazines, uh, you know, I'll take the base plate off, pull out the spring, pull out the follower. I'll clean the follower real good. I'll get inside the magazine body. I'll clean the inside of the magazine body real good. And then I just take the spring out, give a little stretch, put the follower back on, slide it back in, and put the base plate back on. Cool. Okay. And I'm not talking, I'm not like, you know, right, right, right. Like body by Jake working out. <laughs> cool. No, that's, that's a good question because a lot of people don't even think about cleaning the mags. And, and you, can get, you can get stuff in there, especially like we were talking before, if you're dropping them on the ground and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> Any any part of your gun, especially the self defensive gun, you need to make sure that it's in as good a condition as it can be. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't know if you can answer that question. So for me, it's zero. Yeah, a few times. I've I've had to uh, I've had to sit in court a few times and um, you know give my testimony to homicide detectives a few times. I, I, well, I guess I should go back to that. I haven't, unfortunately, it never got to grand jury. I never had to actually, you know, they were all good shoots. So I never had to actually go and testify for myself on grand jury. So what's a good gun to start with? So, oh, that one right there. Glock 19. You don't need the fancy light or, or you the can fancy go and get one dot. of these. Another Glock 19 as well. Yeah, oh, I, thought, I thought you were pointing to the other one behind yeah. <laughs> Try to start with this one right here. It's a pistol, technically. It's a pistol. Um, Good to start for a new owner. What kind of new owner are we talking about? Are we talking about someone that is terrified of guns? Are we talking about a, a younger person, a child, a very, very small person, female? You know, maybe you want to start them shooting a 22. Right. Like your kids have been bringing like my kids. I've been taking the range shooting 22. Um, but other than that, you know, if it's a, an adult that doesn't really have any massive aversion to shooting, go get yourself a good, reliable striker fired nine millimeter pistol or <laughs> Glock. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, look, I'm not a Glock fanboy. I carry a Glock for a living. Uh, that's what my duty and issue gun has been since 2005. Uh, I've had to carry Glocks, so that's what I have for my personal life as well. But there's a lot of good striker fire guns: Springfield XDM, Smith and Wesson M&P nine right. millimeters. Um, I like the Sig 320. What else? There's a couple other Gucci style guns, Canic, and 
you know, yeah. but I don't know. Gun's a tool. Greg, what about this one? As a Leo, you restrain subjects and reholster your weapon as I used to. For a regular lay person, what would you recommend they after they have someone control on the ground? I'm not that smart, Cody. As a Leo, I yes, I do restrain subjects, reholster my weapon. So is like, so I, I think what Cody's asking is, you know, uh, police have a certain protocol and they, you know, they can get somebody in handcuffs, holster the gun. What about yeah. a, a like an armed citizen who Somebody broke into their house and they have them at gunpoint now. Um, I guess what he's asking, what what do what would you recommend after they're at that point? So they have this person at, at gunpoint. No police are around yet to help. Right. I think that's what he's asking. Yeah, no, I think so. Yeah, I, and now that I read it again, and that that's a good question. Um, this actually happened to a buddy of mine who. You know, he former Army Ranger. He wasn't a police officer, but, you know, he was a jujitsu black belt. Actually, I think at the time this happened, I think he was a purple belt. But someone actually, ha that happened. Someone broke into his house. He got him at gunpoint. And then he literally passed his gun off to his roommate and put the dude in a rear naked choke <laughs> and held him there until the cops came. Um, hey, it worked, but, you know. Yeah. That's for his physicality, his skill, his training. It's been my experience that even at gunpoint, people don't listen to commands. So even at gunpoint, uh, the type of person that's going to break into your home or try to rob you isn't going to wait there while you hold them at gunpoint. Because yeah. most of them know, hey, he's this guy's not going to shoot me, especially if I'm running away. And they're going to take right. off and run. Best thing you do is get on 911 and and be a good witness. So, so I don't I don't mean to cut you off. He. Yeah. Uh, he, he talked a little more. He said, I was re referring to out in public with other people present. Um, he's talking about other potentially armed people present. So I guess the question, the real question is, how do you distinguish yourself as the good guy if there are other people armed that are present? Yeah, and that, that is an excellent question. And, man, it's Those a hard one. Are getting complicated. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, it's a hard one. Um, it's, you know, people, unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there that are carrying guns that are not very well trained and they're not very calm and, and they don't put themselves in these sort of situations and they're going to panic. I've always told people, if you have a gun out and you're in, in civilian attire and you have a gun out and police are responding, get rid of the gun. Either get it holstered and concealed real quick, put it in the trash can, put it on the cookie shelf, whatever. Get rid of it before the cops see you with it because you're going to get shot by the police. I, 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 I'm on, um, I'm on the fa basically on the faculty. I teach a national active shooter response course nationwide, and we run a scenario at the end of the course that deals with an off-duty officer with a badge out. And it's set up very clearly. So the very first thing you see is the badge, not the gun. And guess what happens in 50% of the scenarios we run? The other cops shoot the off-duty cop. So kind of in, in relation to your, your question, Cody, going back to that is you've got to maintain massive, massive situational awareness. If you draw down on someone, you're issuing commands right away. I'm looking around and I'm looking for anyone making any sort of furtive movement of going to grab another gun going, Hey, I'm a good guy. Call the cops, call the police, call the police. Right. Right away. Make an eye contact with those people and try and, Hey, call the cops. You call the cops, get on the phone, call 911. Really let them know with verbiage that you're the good guy. And I can't express how important communication and verbiage is. Uh, get on the ground, stop moving. Someone call 911 and start looking around. Hey, look, yeah. if that guy runs off, he runs off. Who cares? but it's not worth you getting shot. Obviously you've got to stay focused on the bad guy. You know, if he's got a gun, if he throws it away, drops it, slides it over. Yeah. Maybe you need to be looking for accomplices as well, but um, you need to be making eye contact with everybody in there and really getting that verbiage out that you're in fact, a good guy and someone needs to call 911. That's, that's the best 
answer I have for you. And if you see the flashy blue lights coming, man, get rid of that gun fast. Yeah. And there's so many, there's so many variants. All these questions are so loaded. Like you can give a hundred different responses for it, but right. it actually brings, brings the point of, you know, if you're getting training, whether it's jujitsu or, or firearms training or, um, you know, like active shooter training or any of this stuff, you're going to, you're going to pick up little bits and pieces from all of this different training that you do, which will, which all together will make you even better prepared for any situation that you might find yourself in. Yeah. It's so it's so tough to talk about this stuff because people ask a question and it's like, well, you know, you have this situation. Okay. We know what's going on, but then a second later, there are a thousand other variables that could happen. So it's not, they're not easy. It's not an easy thing to, to discuss, you know, it's not an easy thing to discuss, especially considering that the large, large majority of people get their firearms training and knowledge from watching movies in Hollywood. And I, and again, I don't mean that as, as an insult, but the majority of people are not involved in, in any sort of uh, lethal force encounters combat. And I, I say combat, not meaning overseas necessarily bullets or bullets, right. whether right. you're back or in, you know, in, in Louisiana. Right. Um, you know, so they get it from watching stuff like John Wick, and there's very, right. very little truth to anything you see on TV about right. uh, about shooting and guns. Right. Well, Luke, uh, Luke, I can't speak for you, but um, I think it's the same thing. We'll we'll be the first to to agree that uh, a lot of people who carry guns are not necessarily prepared for you know X Y Z scenario, and that's why we push training so much. For sure. And, you know, are you training? Are you getting additional I shoot training? Right? The other room. Shoot. Huh? I have a shoot house in the next room that he runs classes out of right, uh, right. twice. And it's like, right. that's what I'm talking about. But that's why, that's why we put such an emphasis on additional training. And, you know, like how many times are you training each year and what are you doing? And what are you adding to your training regimen and all this stuff, you know, which he does so, give classes. It's on Vada training center.com. Once this, once this is all uh, <laughs> quarantine's all over, he does give classes, active shooter response, and VATA, VATA training, training center dot com, training center yeah. dot com. So we've got a shoot house set up with movable walls. Anything you want to add about that? Like, yeah, it's a uh, you know, it's it's CQB basically stuff. like a little modular, um, you know, CQB setup that we utilize to teach active shooter response for civilians specifically. So we cater the curriculum around a civilian response and you get a little bit more than that too, because obviously we're here with a group of, you know, 10 other guys, the courses are limited to 10. So you get tons of repetition because that's really what it comes down to. Yeah. <laughs> and um, you learn how to move your feet and how to walk and a lot and of dancing, a lot of dancing. Lot yeah. Of dancing. It's, it's fun. All right, let's run through some of these questions. Again, we're giving away a hat and a Vada. Vada. I keep saying it wrong. Vada shirt. For anyone that answers or asks a question. Tomato, so, tomato, yeah, bro. Whatever. All right, <laughs> you using your pistols? It's a good question. Um, the factory sites, like. Which, which factory sites? Yeah, which factory sites? So some guns come with very, very good factory sites. If your gun is coming with, you know, metal tritium based sites i think you're good to go some people have preferences some people you know for competitive pistols put different sites on but if you have a good set of metal sites that are dovetailed in the back and they're actually screwed on the front not pinned in and you can figure that out by taking the slide off your gun pulling the barrel out and looking upside down and there if there's an actual screw holding your front sight in you're good to go um speaking specifically of glocks again and i'm just using them as an example most of them come with plastic sights on the gun and they're junk and they'll fall off they should be replaced i have my preference of what i like personally it's one man's opinion take it or leave it but i run meprolites on all my pistols all, all my my defensive carry pistols i run meprolites on uh, I like the Meprolites because they're big and square and blocky and chunky, and they're not adjustable. They don't have ramps on them. I can rack the rear slide off a belt, off a piece of wood, off a corner, off drywall, off brick, 
and they're not going to chip or break or fall off. Um, and they're really good tritium night sights. So night sights, you recommend? Night sights, yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, sorry, right. guys. Making noise back there. You're fine. Um, dry fire system to accommodate dry fire training. So they were a sponsor last week. Manus X has a dry fire system that you can use for live fire as well. It's a little Bluetooth module you can put on the end of your gun if it has a rail or you can attach it to a magazine. Manusax.com. Check those out. You get a bunch of good data and it's kind of fun. They have a bunch of drills and stuff you can do. So there you go. Um, what? Yeah, it is fun. What's the poor? JMO. JMO. No, no. Well, we're not rich like you, so. Oh, he's fancy. He's a fancy whiskey drinker. Five Walker Spice Road. You can get it at any. What did I say? Um, Duty free shop. While traveling. Oh, yeah. there, there was some gnarly barley barley uh, juicifer. Somebody mentioned that. What's a good small gun? Well, same 43? thing. Yeah, I mean, out. same thing. You know, you can go uh, any any current reliable uh, striker fired pistol. So you know, you got the Glock forty three. You've got the Springfield. Was a Hellcat. Um, Sig makes the is it the three sixty five? Three sixty five. Yep. Three sixty five yep. from Sig. I'll go grab it in a second. You got it? Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, what else we got? The XDS Springfield makes the XDS. Yeah. So, you know, you've got a plethora, if you will, of of, of small subcompact so, striker fired nine millimeters. The fact that you've got small guns that carry nine, would you recommend going even smaller to a three eighty, or just stick with your? No, nine? stick with a full size pistol caliber. Um, in particular, nine millimeter, because they have the highest uh, muzzle velocity okay. out of the pistol calibers. Short of, and I'm not talking like, I'm not talking 357 Sig. 357 Sig has a higher muzzle velocity, but you deal with a lot of over penetration issues and uh, longevity of guns and slides. They and they just they have a crazy amount of felt recoil. Um, but nine millimeter and and just smaller is not always better. I only carry my Glock 43 if I'm walking around in like board shorts and a tank top. Right. You know, if, if I'm if I'm carrying a gun somewhere, if I'm going to the opera with my wife and I have to wear a suit, I'm carrying the 43 underneath my tucked in. Hey, you go to opera? I'm a I'm a, uh, a sensitive. <laughs> The new way, you know? Casey likes operas. I have been to an opera. No, she doesn't. I have been to an opera once. Um, but if you know, if I'm wearing formal dress at a formal event and I don't want to carry my full size Glock 19, I'll carry my 43 with it tucked in underneath my shirt. But smaller is not always better. Typically, I don't even want to say typically, like really, pretty much the standard is when you go down, the further you go down in gun size, the harder it is to manipulate. The harder mm -hmm. it is to reload, the the less rounds you have, and the less accurate it is, and the harder it is to shoot. So sticking with like a mid-sized gun to full-size frame gun, you're dealing with better, but obviously it's going to depend. It's a it's a balance. It's a balance of of what you need versus what you have to have. Greg, for um for self-defense ammo for for a concealed carrier for a civilian, you you side with nine millimeter. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So nothing big or nothing smaller. Nothing big and nothing smaller. Yeah. Yep. yep. I do too. I like to. I like to hear that spread around a little more. Because yeah. the, the the nine millimeter is a uh, is a very good round, especially especially with the modern uh, ammo that's out there. Yeah. So uh, again, you know, a, a lot of people speak about this on. And again, I'm not saying anything bad about it, but a lot of it, it's a very passionate subject, right? It's oh, like yeah. its like the BMW versus Mercedes crowd or the Ford versus Chevy crowd. Mm -hmm. There's no actual statistics or data behind any of their argument other than, you know, 
they they both have the picture of the little cartoon dude pissing on the other one's symbol <laughs> on the back of the truck, right? <laughs> and it's the same thing with caliber. It's like no forty five, no nine millimeter, no. And then you got the forty S and W guys. Um, and then you all oh, ten millimeter. Hold on, right? But it is routed in science, right? There are statistics behind yeah. it, which is why the FBI and pretty much every uh, law enforcement agency now is going back to nine millimeter based on the way projectiles are now built and the science behind projectiles and what they're learning about actual wound cavities in people with pistol rounds that there's only a primary wound cavity and not a secondary wound cavity and the velocity of the nine millimeter coupled with the reduced accuracy, uh, I'm sorry, the reduced recoil and increased accuracy and higher magazine capacity lead to more acceptably accurate rounds on target with better mushrooming effects with better velocity and they're dropping people quicker. So it's, it's not about what I like. It's about what the data has shown. Yeah. So here's one minimum amount of rounds or drills that you personally consider minimum per month to stay current. So we kind of touched on that. 50 rounds a week, 50 rounds a week. 50 rounds a week. That's just the number. You, you happy put. with that? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, it's kind of like I talk to you, like, what do you do when you go to the ranch? Yeah. And, and that's a why video I said that. of you talking about the one of them consistency, consistency yeah. drill. Yep. It's on my YouTube channel. You can go watch that. But yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I laughed, um, but I'm pretty serious. So I personally, for me, I try to get out to the range and shoot live fire once a week. And my goal is from the time that I pull up into the parking lot to the time that I'm driving out, I spend one hour there. And when I go out there, I shoot either 50 rounds, 50 to 100 rounds, because I typically shoot two, two drills within that time. Uh, I shoot dot torture, which is a 50 round drill. You can download these for free. Just Google dot torture and the other one. He's I shoot say. the 100 point aggregate drill, which is a 50 round drill. And then sometimes I'll shoot the consistency drill from a uh, gorilla approach, which is not 50 rounds, but what is it like 26 rounds or something like that? Um, I think it's 26 yeah. rounds, I believe. There's if I'm remembering. There. But yeah. anyway, yeah, those are typically the three drills that I shoot. Now I may shoot two of them in combination. I may shoot one of them. And then I've got a little, um, little, little kind of like ipsic, if you will, things set up where I work some movement into it, but I shoot 50 to hundred rounds once a week. And then I drive back out there. Now, is that to say that I do that every single week? No, there are some weeks that I just don't get out to the range and maybe I miss a week and I'm out there, uh, you know, every other week, but as a general rule, I try to shoot 50 rounds a week. All right. Let's scroll through and find some more comments. Question. Hey, you know what we're going to do first? What? We are... Boom. Back to Underwood. Underwood. All right. Hold on. Hang on one second. I just, wanted to, I just wanted to show these rounds really quickly because these are these are the ones that, that Kevin was telling me about. Okay. You guys see that? Yeah. It says you not see that? Luger. Yeah, closer, 90 grain. Extreme Defender. Extreme Defender. 1,400 feet per second. That's fast. Yeah. For their plus P. Is that a plus P round too? These are not the plus P. No. Okay. But it was it was the first box that I saw. These are the ones that are in the picture. So they look like this. Yeah, I've seen those. Yeah. Yep. yeah. They're like scalloped. Like almost a flathead or like a Phillips screwdriver yeah. looking thing. Yes. Can you yeah. see that? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. It's not... It's not very clear there. Um, these are like these are the talk of the town for new uh, self defense rounds. So, Luke, where do we get ballistics gel? Like legit ballistics gel? We gotta make it. That's what Kevin was saying. Can, have you ever messed with that? You can make it a, like a like a gelatin type. Yeah, I mean it's basically gelatin. I think Kevin <laughs> from Underwood was basically saying just get a mold and mix it and. Yeah, when you need to shoot it because it needs to be like in the fridge for seven days or so. I mean, I just bought a new fridge, yeah. for it, so um, I we should, should have, have to drink some of that beer to make room for ballistics gel. 
Um, but like I said, Will, a good friend of ours, Will, which might be on here one day, he wants to just go test some defensive ammo and ballistic gel because I so, love sounds like I'd fun. Love, I'd love to test this stuff alongside of a like a standard hollow point, like a horn of the XTP or something like that. Sure. Name of the sites, Anthony, were Mepro, M E P R O, and Mepro Lights. I think somebody posted Ameriglows. Cody Schilling said Ameriglows. I like Ameriglows too. They make some good sites. Yeah. Any good training for seniors to supplement, supplement CCW? Yeah, Tim, you know, there's a lot of stuff. You know, seniors, I don't know how old you are, what you're referring to. Um, but man, it's never too late to start anything, you know, like even if you get up and, and you know, start, like I said earlier in the, in, in the episode, you know, start doing push-ups and sit-ups and squats, do them every morning, you know, do them every day and, and, and work your way up. Just start moving around, um, stretching mobility stuff. You know, I, I start to get it now. You know, my my dad told me when I was in the 20s, getting old ain't for pussies, son. And, and I'm trying to get it now because, man, do I hurt in the morning. Uh, when I get out of bed, I walk like cro Magnon, man. You know, like I'm all hunched over. I can't straighten my arms. I mean, you see me walking around. I, I, I typically can't straighten my arms, and I'm all banged up. But, you know, so uh, I feel you. I think that's Maybe probably just going to get worse. Maybe jiu-jitsu, dude. No, never. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, for seniors, like I've got some students in my academy that are in their early sixties and they're out there training. They're, they're in there a few nights a week training and rather than going to a gym and getting on a treadmill or they're in there with me for an hour and they train at their level at their speed. And obviously I don't mm -hmm. pair them up with the wild 20 year old kid that wants to go hard as, you know, um, and I take care of them. But they're out there not just getting physically fit, but learning skill sets as well. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's for you. What? Speak a lot about Glocks. But what about a more budget? Friendly? A, lot, a lot about Glocks. I want a more budget friendly VC. What's budget? What's budget? I mean, right. That's it's something mean, you're like, like so, you know, protect yourself with so how budget do you want to how cheap do you want to go on that so so mo most new glocks are what five five fifty yeah what's a glock right yeah yeah about you know. i think most gun stores for a standard glock 19 yeah. you know anywhere from anywhere from like 480s to 550 yeah so so what is what is lesser than that? We have the well, what's the what's the MMP series run? They're they're the same, like the two fifty to three hundred somewhere in there. MMPs, some shields. No, <laughs> no. no way, dude. They're as much as Glocks. No, four fifty. Like Rugers. If you're, looking, if you're looking at Rugers, like the American, what is it, the American series they call it or something? I think they're a little less expensive. Then you go all the way down like high points. Yeah, so, but, I mean, there's. there's, I don't there's, there's high almost. <laughs> You can get a Yeet Cannon for 139 bucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a lot of good stuff in the middle. I mean, there's like uh, the Hellcat is what 500 bucks, and at the gun store you can probably get it for what 450. Yep. And you have um, you know a lot of the a lot of the different movers. I don't, I don't even, I can't even think of what the three hundred and twenty nine dollars on Paul Meadows for, for, for the M and P Shield 2.0. Oh yeah, yeah, but it's it's discounted from five hundred dollars. Well, so street. But that's price. the going rate. Yeah, right. So, but the going rate at a gun store is five hundred bucks. So, so we're, we're, where's that well, from? Still, I mean, well, but here's another thing, David, and and you know, I'm here's something to think about. They have good prices. Those. You don't necessarily need to buy a new gun. A lot of these gun stores have consignment guns. Right. Right. Yeah. You go into a gun store and you go get a consignment gun. You can go to get a really. Most of my Glocks are Gen three Glocks. The Glocks that I own and carry are Gen 3s. I don't carry any – short of my duty gun, I don't carry a new Gen 5 gun. Because they work. I right? like the Gen 3s. I love the Gen 3s. So you can go to a gun store and find yourself a good consignment you, you know, consignment used Glock and get a great gun. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe talk to the gun person, have them break it down. The, the, the You know, I don't know, find out what the qualifications are there. Heck – 
tell us to do another live and come on here with your Glock and I'll tell you how to give it a whole little diagnosis. There we go. And uh, Cody's Cody's saying the Smith and Wesson MP Shield 249 at PSA. That's for that's correct. They're usually 249 there. Um, that's the, for the, the that's the, for the MP 1.0. I mean, and it still works. Yeah. Like it shoots bullets. So yeah, they're great guns. I like the for trigger two hundred and fifty. Like, but yeah, yeah. So Anthony, I just posted a link to Manus X in the comment. I think so. Did it no, go? Anthony's asking about the sites. I talked about. Oh already, wait, I highlighted the wrong too. comment. Yeah. So somebody asked about what the drive oh, system was. Does, yeah, Mantis X. Um. Yeah. So there it is. That's it. Was Bernie. Um. Then I saw some other questions. <laughs> Jessica talking about fitness. Do we want to go? Fitness. Fitness, fitness pizza, pizza in my mouth. <laughs> Jessica, yeah. I like you more and more, girl. <laughs> Are you into fitness? fitness. <laughs> uh, you know, the difference between striker fire and. Striker fired. I'll, I'll, all I mean by striker fired is striker fire. there's no external hammer. So if you look at. Just the Glock's point. back here, right? There's no hammer. It's all encased. Inside the uh, the slide of the gun is basically, for, for you know, a, a lack of a better term, a firing pin, uh, i.e. a striker. And it's completely in-house inside the slide. There's no external, external hammer that needs yeah. to be cocked or anything. You'll have, you'll have the, the diehard hammer people, but I'm a, I'm a striker fire 100%. Absolutely. And look, I, you know, I love the 1911 for what it is. Oh yeah. Oh the, yeah. The 1911 was the, 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 you know, the gold standard in, in modern combat pistols yep. back in the day. But, you know, it's the same thing. Like I tell people like, you know, technology and guns have come so far. Yeah. Does anybody on here want to trade in their current car for the car that they had back in the 1970s? No, no, nobody does, you know? Um, and then not to mention if I put a 1911 on a table with a magazine and a Glock 17 on a table with a magazine and say, Hey, there's bad guys inside your house with your family right now. I don't know how many bad guys, what gun are you going to pick up? Well, even Glock 1911 17. guys have told me, Oh, I'll pick up the Glock because I've got more rounds. Well, no shit, Sherlock, <laughs> you know? So um, I love the 1911s too, but I would never, ever carry one. Yeah. Luke, did you put that one up from Cody? Yeah. Do you do you see what he's saying? He said as far as drill goes. Yeah. What he's talking about? Yep. I know exactly what you're talking about, Cody. Yeah. I, I've got some of those targets. You know, I've got the targets with multiple color shapes with numbers inside them, and I can call out red, and they got to shoot okay, the, yeah. the red circle and the red square. Yeah. Or I can call it squares, and they got to call it square. Square three, shoot the square, shoot the three. Uh, I do those for incorporating additional drills as well. Um when you're doing it on your own as a shooting drill, it's it's a little um, premeditated, if you will. One of the things that I've actually done is uh, I uh, a student I didn't do it. A student of mine built them and sent them to me. They're actually like homemade dice hmm. with colors on each side and numbers on each side, and you drop them in front of you, and whatever's up, color and number you got to engage, which is kind of cool. cool yeah. You can't premeditate it in your head. Um, I know some companies actually make a deck of cards, right? And you flip a card over and then draw and shoot. So there are ways to do that. Um, I've, I've kind of moved away from some of the, uh, the more kinetic drills, if you will, into working really more honing into the fundamentals of shooting because I don't, I'm not on the range. I don't shoot every day anymore uh, where there was a time in my life where I was shooting pretty much every day. Um, so I kind of focus a little bit more on, on the fundamentals and in those drills, dot torture, uh, 500 point aggregate and consistency drill are kind of my go-tos. Cool. Luke, I thought you said he wasn't a gun guy. What are you talking about? I'm not. He's I'm, not. I'm a shooting guy. I'm not a gun guy, believe it or not. <laughs> Luke, do you mind? Can I put one up here to take? Sure. The, uh, the age old question, do you carry around the house? And we've covered this a lot over the last couple of weeks with like the pandemic and everybody at home and all of this stuff. And so, Luke, tell me if you're the same and, and Greg, too. So 
I'm the type of person when I get up in the morning, I, I get dressed as if I'm going out most of the time. Like I'll put on jeans or shorts and everything. And I won't, I won't put on like, uh, you know, gym shorts or anything like that. Because if I do, I kind of feel lazy. Like I'm not going to get anything done. So Are I'll put on jeans right now. <laughs> well, right now, actually, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> seriously, like in the morning, I'll put on, I mean, I hear I'm you. Florida, so I'll put on shorts. You're right now, you want to feel like not a degenerate and like wake well, up. Under quarantine, like I'll put on my shorts, I got my belt, I have my wallet, uh, right. all that stuff, and and I have my gun. So I put everything on as if I were going to go out that day. So, but even if we weren't under quarantine and whatever, I would still do the same thing because I never, you know, you like you make a quick quick trip to the store, whatever the case may be. Um, so this whole carrying around the house thing, if you're gonna lounge around in in gym shorts and whatever and it's not ideal to to carry the gun with you then you know have have something staged or have something right so i have a four-year-old running around the house so i'm not gonna like wrestle with him with a gun on right right generally i take the gun off and it's somewhere he can't get to it but i can right right uh, if i leave the house i'm carrying so i mean yeah and like, no, probably not. You got kids too. Was, yeah. yeah. So I so I don't have kids. So I'll so I'll carry it all day long. And there are also things that are staged around the house. But the you know you and I have done enough stories with um, you know you see the surveillance videos with how quickly mm-hmm. these home invasions happen. And I just want people to think about like if you do or you don't carry at home, you have to ask yourself, if somebody kicks in your door in a second, are you going to be prepared for that? Are you going to have something that's close enough? Are you going to be able to get to a place? Are you going to remember that four digit code to get into the safe to grab the gun before he gets to you? Right. Whatever your situation is, would you have, would you have time to react literally in a second, two seconds, because that's how long sometimes it takes to kick a door down. And we've seen this stuff. So, um, that's kind of what I tell people because everybody's situation is different. Everybody's setup is different. Everybody's living situation is different. Um, so, but I, I feel like the more, the more that you're able to carry at home, the better, um, or at least the, the, the closer your gun is to you, as long as it's in a safe place, you know, depending on whatever your living situation is. Um, that, that's always like the, the thing to, the thing to reach, you know, like the optimal setting. We talked about this the other day a little bit, you and me. What? About utilizing safes in your home and whatnot. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and I mirror your image, you know, your 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 thought, Brandon. Uh, I don't carry on me when I'm at home. That being said, the way my home is laid out and structured, um, I have loaded, i.e. chambered firearms basically near every entry point to my house Mm -hmm. as well as in my my alamo where my wife knows to go with my kids should i tell her to hard point don't give away all your secrets i'm sorry (laughs) 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 but uh you know so i don't carry but I can get to a gun in a fraction of a second. It's loaded. It's ready to go. And with that, yeah. being, you know, like I've got a home, I've got a home camera system. Um, I got a 60 plus pound fur missile with big bitey things in his mouth. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I don't carry daily, but so my argument for people who keep their guns in saves, right? I've got two young kids. I got a five-year-old and an eight-year-old. Um, Going to what you back to what you said, Brandon, like if you keep your gun in a safe, you don't have time a lot of times to get that gun out of the safe. If right. that was last, I think last time, like my gun safe is to keep the that you know? I'm not carrying. Yeah, the guns in my safe are the guns that I don't utilize other than for right. 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 There it's storage. Right. It's storage, exactly. Right. Right. Um all right. Let's see. Thoughts on point shooting. 
There's a question for a firearms instructor. Thoughts on point shooting. Um, I don't train it. I don't teach it. I teach how to utilize your sights for what is necessary for your target size and your engagement distance. And I teach a variety of, of, of sight control drills to shoot everything from, you know, everything from not using sights in a contact engagement, i.e. we're this close and obviously I don't want to give him my gun. So that would be the only, I guess, quote unquote, point shooting that I teach is when we're dealing in an actual entangled gunfight grappling. Uh, but I teach a series of sight control drills based on any everything from what I call basically a flash sight picture where I'm just getting a, a, a very quick bang glimpse of a front sight somewhere in that rear sight notch, roughly kind of sort of, to a floating sight picture to where I can see my front sight, but it's just kind of floating around what I deem to be acceptable given my distance. And then a focus sight picture, meaning I'm beyond 25 yards now and I really need to hone in on my sight picture. Um, I don't advocate point shooting. I don't advocate training point shooting. If you can train to become a visual shooter, i.e. watching your sights and letting your sights tell you where your rounds are, are hitting, which you can do. Then in a real life scenario, when you are on the reaction versus action, potentially you're still getting a rough a semblance of it, right? Whenever we train, we're always training and striving for that 100% solution because in combat, the best we'll probably achieve is a 50% solution to that. But if we're training for a 70% solution, we'll now do the math and cut that in half and now we're only yeah. at a 35% solution. So, yeah. you know, you kind of got to be out on the range or with a target to really make sense of it. But I've done some of these drills with Luke um, mm. and you would be amazed at what you can get away with on, on how poor of a sight picture you can have and still get good, acceptable combat accurate hits on, on a human torso. Right. So, like the yeah. drill you did. So yeah, the sign of the cross, the sign of the cross drill. Um, sorry. I, you know, I, just I, well, real quick. So you take your, you take your yeah. side, you line them together and then you bring your front side up and shoot. And then you bring your front side down and then you bring left and right. And they're still in, yeah, a basically zone, a, a zone, zone, C zone on Ipsic target. So, all right, what did you throw out there? So, you guys it. familiar with this bullet setback? It's when you, uh, what? Basically, when you chamber the same round multiple times. Yeah, it gets there, there the can be this phenomenon called bullet setback. Yeah, yeah. Are you guys familiar with that? Yes. Yeah, it's it's really apparent in rifles. Yeah. Um, it's really apparent in rifles. Uh, it does happen in pistols. And we want to make sure that when you're going to the range and what he's saying is you don't just unload your pistol, rack the round out of your chamber, put it aside, go shoot all day with your gun and then come back and put the same round in your chamber and chamber it and then put the magazine back in. Because every time you chamber that round, basically as that round gets chambered, the, the projectile, right? The bullet that's crimped into the casing gets compressed and compressed and compressed and compressed. And then eventually it's not going to chamber properly. You'll have a mal malfunction. So, and that also when, when the bullet, when the bullets compress in the casing and this doesn't happen every time. So don't be like super paranoid about it, but just keep it in mind. But the bullet is compressed into the casing and it increases the pressure when you do actually fire that round. So um, it's a, I think it's a, it's something to keep in mind, but not a, not a serious concern necessarily. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the way you can avoid it is just that round that's in the chamber. If you're reloading your duty carry before, you you know, your defensive carry before you go back out, just strip a few rounds out of the magazine, put that one somewhere in the middle, and then yeah. you're a different round. Yeah. That's yep. the unscientific way. Yep. So this guy wants to upgrade his M&P, change out accessories. I'm just thinking – Again, what we talked about recently, like what are you upgrading? Yeah, wh why do you want to upgrade? What are you upgrading? Uh, if it's a defensive carry pistol, everything that's inside internal should remain factory from the factory, from the manufacturers, the way they designed it. Good. For 
angles. If you want to grip, if you want to stipple your grip, change your sights on the outside, spray paint it a cool color, sure, have at it, but everything internal should stay the same. Right. Are you talking about a carry gun, just to be clear? Yeah. Yes, a yeah. carry gun, defensive carry gun. You're using it for training only, or you're out shooting IPSIC, IDPA, using it for a com competition gun. Cool. Yeah. Do the world yeah. to it. But if, if yeah. you're carrying it or utilizing it for any sort of defensive carry, keep everything factory internally. Yeah, look, look, you're the same way, right? Keeping everything stock internally. I don't change anything. I never have even messed with triggers or. I, I don't either. Yeah. Recoil springs or. Nope. Yeah. Me neither. Nothing. It works. So, like, it works. Whatever. And if it doesn't work, get you something get else. Get a um, different gun. <laughs> right. Uh, let's see. I think practicing outside is better than being indoors. Um, I like shooting outdoors versus but indoors. You, but you got to be you got to be ready for indoors too. You have yeah. the, the, the noise level. The noise level. The concussion is different. I'm I'm thinking about like self defense training if. Uh, somebody breaks into your home type of thing being, being familiar with that concussion that you feel when you shoot indoors yeah okay yeah you know just scrolling through these we got Not what maybe 20 minutes left um that's the one we got uh, hold on we got to switch to uh we only have 20 minutes left well i mean back to better for the last segment here there's questions we can keep going but uh, if facility states not far as, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if a, if, a, if a facility states it's a non farm area, do you still carry and conceal? Well, no. mama don't know, won't hurt her. <laughs> do what you got to do to, um, you know, whatever. Depends on the state. Sometimes, like, uh, uh, no farms allowed signs don't hold any weight of the law, like Florida. So, when I lived in Tampa and went to the uh, movie theater right down the street, there was a no guns allowed sign and I would walk right past it because it didn't mean anything. If yeah. they caught me with a gun, if they saw it or something, they would have to tell me to leave. Yeah. If they didn't, then it would be trespassing, but it was concealed. So they never saw it. So it didn't matter. I wasn't breaking the law. So yeah. know what that law uh, I guess what that sign means in your state and then make a decision on that. So. Look, do you remember, you remember when we were at uh, the NRA convention last year? No, I was never at the NRA convention. Did you not go? No. Oh crap. Okay. Well, hold on. <laughs> let, let me tell you real quick. Were you really not there? No, I've never been in an NRA convention. Oh, I, I must've been thinking of something else. Okay. So <laughs> we went to the, so we went to the NRA convention and um, everybody wanted to go out afterwards. And this was in, I think it was in St. Louis, Missouri. And the no firearm signs. In All right. You're wrong. You were talking about when we were in South Carolina. <laughs> no, no, no. This was in Missouri. Are you no, sure? Missouri. Yeah. This was with yeah. Brian from Emma Land and a couple other people. Yeah. Okay. And All right. Go ahead. Yeah. So anyway. So Palmetto State Armory. Just so no, you know. No, no, It wasn't South Carolina. So we we want to go out to eat. Yeah. So they find this restaurant and it had a no gun sign. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. But in that state, yeah, I it remember the, way of the law. I remember. That's why I wasn't caring because I knew I was going to be drinking. So you were there. Yeah, we were in South Carolina visiting Paul. No, no, no. This is, I'm talking about a different a different time. This is sure. NRA convention. Okay. Cool. So. We kept walk because a bunch of us were carrying, so we kept walking around to these other locations to find a restaurant uh -huh. that did not have okay. what. Shut up! You do not remember. <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. But it's like so. If so, the question is for you, for Greg too. If if you're say you're in a state that those signs posted legally do carry the weight of the law. Um. I won't go in them. And I'm not just saying this because we're doing a live video. Like I, I won't go into those places. I will, I will bypass them and go somewhere else. But of course, if it's a state where the, the sign does not hold any weight of the law and they say no guns, I'm still going to go in. Well, he's different. So yeah, he's I mean, a cop. 
Yeah, so, I, does, I, I can't. I can't answer this the same way. Because you can just carry wherever you want. I can carry anywhere in the country or or our territories, right. and no one can really say shit other than be upset. <laughs> Um, but I, I agree with you as a concealed carrier, we really do owe it to uphold the law and obey the law. And if there's a, if there is a legal thing with carrying a gun in there, could you probably get away with it? Yeah, for sure. I mean, almost definitely can you get away with it, but God right. forbid the one thing happens or you know what? I mean, look, all cops are different, right? God forbid you got that one off duty cop in there that sees you printing. And right. he knows you're not supposed to be carrying a gun in there. And he's like, ooh, I'm going to get my boy who's on duty right now a quick stat. Right. It's your own fault. It really is, right. you know. Right. Unfortunately, so, so you're, I mean, you're Whole in the Foods right. right here, they have a sign. Yeah. And it holds the way to law. So I don't carry when I go to Whole Foods. I don't shop at Whole Foods. Well, there you go. Whole so, Luke, but yeah. Luke, why don't, let me ask you this. Why, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, but why don't you shop somewhere else? I do usually now, but there are times where I go into Whole Foods, um, whether it's to get lunch because it's like a block or two away and I can get something healthy. But generally, I shop at Rouse's or another like Winn-Dixie or something. They, they don't have the signs. Right, they don't have those signs. What are you laughing at? A comment? Listen to Magnum P.I., um, the stash is boss. <laughs> so, yeah, but there are times I do go into that store and get something. Mm -hmm. So I just don't carry in there because it's not worth it for me to get i don't know caught or something like so i try not to shop there every day but there are times where i have to go there yeah there's that do i need to explain the stash to to the, uh, the all right yeah there's been some comments about the stash so first yeah, off there's the been stash, a lot of comments about the stash where is the right, stash is go. a total piss take i don't normally walk around with this amazing beautiful no no, no. Thing glorious, thing. glorious, thing. glorious. <laughs> I realize it is ridiculous looking, but it's like it's a For good sure. mustache. I realize I look like a rapist, but <laughs> there's a series of videos <laughs> about that stash from like a year or so ago. From, yeah, on Gun Talks uh, page. But. Yeah, if you go on uh, the Vada Instagram page, you'll see a bunch of uh, tales of the stash videos that someone else did. Pretty funny. Yeah, I can't. But I grow it out every once in a year to uh, to aggravate my wife and uh, just kind of like, I don't know, relish in this gloriousness. And I've decided during this quarantine period, I'm keeping the mustache until the quarantine is over. So Corona stash. It's a, it's a legit excuse. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we touched base on that earlier. I'm, I'm gonna go firearm. Firearm. There's a video Greg and I just did on the YouTube channel about that. It's the one you train with. Just that's the easy answer to that, right? Yeah, pretty much. That being said, I have uh, mostly loaded pistols dispersed around my house, but I also always have a rifle ready to go. So, and does it often change? I would assume no. No, they stay the same. Yeah. Hello, what's Look, what's your number one uh, home defense firearm? My Glock 19. I've taken yeah. classes with that. That's what I shoot most. That's what I would rather pick up and feel comfortable yeah. shooting. So, so my mine's the Mossberg 590 tactical shotgun. Yeah. How many classes have you taken with that? A lot. <laughs> what do you keep loading in it? Uh oh. Buckshot. Double lot. Yeah. Okay. Well, you don't have like family. Li you live by yourself, with my wife. Okay. In a. What are your thoughts about that? In a townhouse, or where do you, where do you live? It's a. Um, yeah, I guess it would be considered a townhouse. Yeah. Right. So, uh, for shotguns, I recommend if they are using it for home defense, uh, I recommend like a number six shot. Because double lot will go through one wall and through the room and through the next wall and through the room and out the exterior wall across the street in the granny Smith's house and killer. Um, okay. and we, we built a bunch of walls and shot through like three of them and they still kept going. Um, so typically number six shot is, is enough to like really, especially with one or two rounds, like smash someone but it will stay typically inside in one set of drywall. So it'll okay. go to the drywall and it won't typically go out the next side. 
Um, that's my recommendation for load carriage for if someone's going to use a shotgun. I My go-to, so same thing. I have 9 millimeter Glock stashed around my house. But like my primary, if, if, if I hear something serious, I'm grabbing my, my M4. And it's a shorty 10 and a half inch M4. And it's outfitted with my white light and the whole nine yards. Um, and I carry a, basically a ballistic tipped low penetration, um, duty round in it. So on that note, is that, how's that round deal with walls? Same thing. It'll go, it'll go typically it'll go through a wall, but it, it breaks up so much. Okay. And it loses so much velocity, um, that it's either a not accurate or, or B not super lethal. That's not to say all the time. Right. You know, if it hits that one void, that's perfectly clear but that's so about knowing your backstops and, and and knowing your backstops knowing your 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 limits of fire etc gotcha tactical knife and light you recommend um good question knives knives uh for my uh, the, uh my concealed carry knife i carry a kernel yeah which I'm, is a fixed blade knife do you have one? not right off so let's you can we can you can go to Colonel. Well, I don't no, know you can't go to Colonel Blades yeah. anymore. But I think Bravo Company. If you go to Bravo Company USA, is. okay, yeah. uh, Bravo is now the 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 manufacturer distributor for Colonel Blades. But I carry a Colonel Blade. It's a very intuitive Curved. knife. Yeah, it's it's not a karambit knife. per se. It's, it's it's not a punch knife. It's kind of a variation of both. Uh, here's the thing about knives. Um, mm. Don't yeah. knife fight, ever. Period. End of story. Don't knife fight. If you're going to use a knife as an offensive weapon, yes, you should somewhat kind of know what you're doing. But if you don't, then have a knife that that helps that. And that's what this is kind of designed for. This is a knife that is designed to be able to employ and use for someone who doesn't have any knife training because you can just punch with it if you need to. But if you know how to use a knife, you can also slash with it and move with it. Um, so Colonel Blades uh, through Bravo Company. Are you looking it up right now? Yeah, I was going to at least show a picture. And then online, Light, I I'm... I don't have mine here. Yeah, I, I'm personally a big fan of sticking with Surefire. Not to say that Streamlight, some of the other companies don't make really good lights. That's the folder. Okay. Don't get the like, folder. Yeah, it's it's really that. so there. Yeah, that that's one, it. Right? Yeah. That's the one we have. So that's the Colonel Blade that he's talking and about. And that's the low vis okay. version. And it comes in a little Kydex sheath. Yep. And you generally carry that to where you can grab it with your left hand. Yeah, I carry set, it, I right? carry it set up with my my non-dominant hand because I carry my pistol appendix with my dominant hand. And then I can access with whatever hand I need. Uh, and I personally lean towards surefire lights yeah. uh, is- just because of my personal experience. But that's not to say that there's not other good lights out there, Streamlight, yeah. some of the other off-brands. We talked about that last week. Enough, but- surefire, Streamlight. Yeah, I, I personally carry surefires. Just my 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 experience. All right, so let's get back to where did you just? Oh, you just took that one off. Um, yeah, I, I was removing the the secondary one was under there as well. He's getting something out of his bag. Listen to Magnum PI. All right, what are your thoughts on open carry versus? Conceal carry, we talked about that already. Um, carry, all three of us conceal carry. Conceal carry, hundred um, percent. If he wants to know actual thoughts on that, then it's just. Are you guys founders? Or did you just reference? Story are you guys founders of your respected organizations? Yes. So we're all so. Brandon owns Conceal Nation. I own USA Carry. And Great. my organization is not respected at all. So. It is respected. Respective. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Right, yeah, we're good. yeah. Greg yeah. owns Vada Training Center, a well, co-owner with uh, a partner. And uh, I thought it was Vada. Vada. Fuck. Damn, you remember. <laughs> Vada, Vada, yeah, tomato, tomato, yeah, whatever. whatever. No, no, what is it really? It, it's an acronym, so I guess it depends on where you're at, where, yeah, you, where Vada, you're from in the Vita, country. Vada, Vita. Do you say Vada, Vita, 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 What is what is what is your your father's sister? My, father, my aunt. My aunt. aunt. My your aunt, aunt or aunt? Is it an aunt or an aunt? <laughs> All right, I'll so, try to remember that. I'm gonna screw it up from now on. What? Greg, how do you pronounce the name of your business? 
We say VADA. Okay. VADA. All right. Which stands for? Vulnerability Assessment and Threat Analysis. Because that's where we actually started off. We started off doing uh, vulnerability assessments, threat analysis of of uh, facilities, and we just kind of morphed into the training realm instead because that's what we did in our government lives. Tomato, potato. Exactly. Tomato, potato. Tomato, <laughs> potato, dude. Yeah. That's what he always says. Potato, potato. potato. Greg? Are Greg's you auditioning, auditioning for, for Super Troopers 3? Yes, indeed I am. It's for a cop? I'll have a liter of cola, please. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, Gene, this will, uh, any of the places that you're watching this right now, this will, it'll stay there. So you'll be able to rewatch all of this shenanigans again. Yeah, it'll be on our Facebook pages, the YouTube page, all that good stuff. And we still... Yeah, we still have about 10 minutes. Yeah. Here's something. We'll see. Is it feasible to use an RPG-7 and a child molester? <laughs> sure. I guess it depends on yeah. your backstop, brother. <laughs> and watch your backblast area, too. <laughs> backblast area all clear? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I remember that from boot camp. <laughs> all right. Uh, I think we just covered this. Yeah, the, oh, the, Hornady, the Hornady tap rounds. That's are, a good question. Yeah, the Hornady tap rounds are really good for stopping people with really poor barrier penetration. Uh, I, I'm, and I'm speaking specifically to the 55 grain Hornady tap. Um, so if you don't want them going through walls and, and going out into other people's houses and just stopping people, I, I think the 55 grain Hornady tap is a really good option. There are a lot of good things out there, but um, – yeah, you might not find it right now, but yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. We obviously talked about that earlier. Yes, carry one with carry with the round in the chamber. In the chamber. For sure. Yeah. And you and if you're not comfortable with carrying in the chamber, then keep training. Yes. Where is Vada located? I did it again, huh? Yeah, Vada. Vada. V-A-T-A. Um, and dude, yeah. you look really familiar. That dude looks super familiar in that picture, Ross Birkin. So, Jr. Ross, where are you from? Do you know him? Um, Vada is located in Louisiana, and we operate I'm right around here. Yeah, we we operate <laughs> on a, a range out of Slidell, and we do. We are currently just started redoing classes open to the public in uh, the Mandeville area, which are not shooting related courses. But right now with this whole quarantine thing, that is uh, – They're shooting related, but not shooting. No, they're not, not, we're not live, shooting. Live fire shooting. Right. Correct. No live fire shooting. BB guns. Yeah. Pelicans, blue guns. Airsoft. Blue yeah. guns. It's more about tactics and – Dancing. Decision making. <laughs> You're going to come down, Brandon. <laughs> yes, I will. Yeah, take this class. I will. I will. Yeah, there you uh, go. I knew I knew you from CFM, Ross. I knew I knew you from over there, buddy. What's CFM or is that CrossFit Mandeville? Right oh, there. No, it's like literally, like literally 10 right, feet away. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. CrossFit Mandeville. That's fine. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm I'm gonna, gonna come out there for some training today and help me get this fridge in my studio. So yeah, there we go. Yeah, dude, Brandon, come on down, man. I will. I'll get my ass kicked, but I'm gonna come down for some training. Yeah. Come oh, on you're down. You're gonna do jujitsu too. Well, that's, yeah. what, that's what you need to All do. Right. If you can, if I mean, shit, you don't have kids, so you can pretty much do whatever you want. Come down for a few days. Come, come down when we're running a course. Do the two day weekend course. Yeah. And then either stay a few days before, before the on the front end or on the back end, and then come to the gym. We'll do some training. I'll do it. Sounds Luke, fun. Luke, Luke's looking at me like he's not going to do it. <laughs> no, I want you to come. I'd love. I'll, it. I will. I will. I will. Hey, for sure. He bullies you. Just tell me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he deserves a good Darth shot, though. Yeah. So. What's All that? Right, we're, nothing. Um, we just hit the two-hour mark. So. We're at one fifty-three. Yeah. So, guys, I guess. So, I guess we're gonna probably be wrapping this up, right? Yeah. Unless so, there's any more questions, again, we're giving out a hat and shirt. Yeah, we got a couple more, a couple more minutes for some questions. If you guys want to sneak them in there. So, 
looking to take a hang on one on one course. Just so happens that me and some guy I know, oh, you just filmed what nine videos for a hang on one on one course that'll hopefully be live. I'm trying at least part of it within the next week or two. So it'll be on all online. It'll be free at first. So there you go. That answers that question. Right? But yeah, Ross, um, because you're local. <clears throat> oh yeah. He's, that's the same yeah. Okay. And, and we know some of the same people get in contact with us offline. Whoops. There you go. I didn't mean to click that. I was looking at that. So, okay. hey, Jessica, I can't get you a Concealed Nation or USA Carry sticker, but I'll yes, throw a can. sticker I've in. I've got a sticker. But, but, but we can. I'll throw you a Vata sticker in with the T-shirt and the hat because uh, I think you may have asked the best questions. on uh -oh. the Jessica, send, send an email to info at concealednation.org, and, and we'll get you a uh, – some stickers. Swag. Stickers. And she's got a Jeep. That's why I highlighted it. What size shirt does she wear? <laughs> What's up, Jenny? Played out. What is that? What you mean? talking about? <laughs> uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. A friend of ours. Sorry. Jessica, what, what kind of Jeep do you have? This is the ultimate question. Oh, they, so they're, he's a, he owns a Jeep. What kind of Jeep? What, you're good. I like Jeeps. I'm, I'm on my fourth Wrangler. Fifth. What year? The new one. Oh, you got a new one? The the most recent one? Yeah. Uh, 18. Oh, nice. They're getting, all, all the way back to 2000. He's such a Jeep guy that he ran in, in Illinois was a Jeep. Cool. So he picked me up in a Jeep. I'm, I'm down like, with that. Right, cool. <laughs> I'm down with that. I like Jeeps. Oh, um, not sure about the course we're talking about. Um, probably not on YouTube. It'll be like kind of in like a members area thing, but it'll be free at first. So uh, get in touch with me. I'll let you know where that is. Jessica, you, we need a shirt size, right? Wrangler. All right. JK. Standard. All right. My, my favorite one I had, it was a 2000, 2005 or 2006, and it was the two years that the Wrangler had the six speed. Manual transmission. That was nice. That was a two, that was a TJ. That, that was, was a TJ. A, yep. You buy so yeah. Yep. Oh wait, Jessica, you got an XJ? What year XJ? Where you see that? Because I had I had an old I had a uh, I had a ninety nine <clears throat> XJ. No no no. I think she's. I think that's XL. XL sure. Oh XL. I'm sorry. I thought I was. Well, I'm still talking Jeeps. But the but the XJ that was a long time ago. Darcy, Jenny's saying my Darcy. Yeah, I had a '99 XJ all built out, <laughs> jacked Did up. Y'all, dude, the thing was. All right. Awesome. all right, so she she had a six speed. Yeah, the six speed is the way to go if you're gonna have the manual. And I, I was pretty. I'm pretty sure 2005, 2006 was the only years that they had that. But maybe I'm wrong. What was my first firearm? I remember. I'll answer that twice. So, <clears throat> my first firearm was a crack barrel 410 shotgun. That's the first gun my dad gave me when I was young. And then the first gun I bought was a Beretta 90 dash two nine millimeter pistol because I grew up with Berettas and that was the first gun I bought. And I wanted to be like, that's funny. Oh, my first gun was kind of a Beretta like, too. Right. So I grew up with Berettas. My dad had Berettas 92s. So I got the 90 dash two. It was like a little upgraded. My, version. my first one was, <laughs> I think it was, I think the, the number was an 84 F it was the cheetah. It, oh, was, yeah. it was a 380 version yeah. of the, of the 92, basically. <clears throat> um, the first gun I'd ever really grew up shooting was uh, a Beretta Spitfire crack barrel, 25 caliber. I probably, so I've got a, I probably have, I've got two, like, I, I think I've got a 32 and a 380. Yeah. Crack barrel. Maybe barrel. it was a 32. Yeah. 380 was the yeah. 84. Yeah. And I, all the, I still have a bunch of brands because that's what I grew up shooting. Yeah. What was yours? What's that? First firearm. So this will tell you that I'm a I'm a relative noob to firearms uh, than you guys. My first ever was a Ruger SR9C. Okay. Which was about 2000. 10, I think. 
All right. Yeah, my first concealed carry pistol that I thought that was, was, that was the it, first one I ever bought. My, the, my, my dad had some that, that we shot. We went hunting. Yeah. I think my first concealed carry gun before I knew what I was doing was a 32 Beretta crack barrel. And I still have it. I'm like, oh, I'll carry it on my ankle. It'll be great now. Oh, yeah. Um, Hold yeah. on. Let me let me put this email for her. All right. So where are we at? So we should just be at two hours. We are at, no, we have 15 seconds, buddy. 15 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, listen, Greg, it was awesome to meet you. And yeah, I'm so yeah. happy you came on. Thanks for this having me. fun. I appreciate it. Two hours goes by like that, doesn't it? It does. Well, especially when we drink. Really <laughs> so this is hard work. Before we go, we can take a couple more questions if you guys want, but um, – all right, hold on. We'll get to that one. The 101 course that I talked about will be through usacarry.com. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, it'll be on the site within a few oh. weeks. I'm still figuring out. We filmed it. We've got nine videos done. Um, I just got to figure out the other technical parts. And maybe so. it'll be on Conceal Nation. Maybe I'll just copy it. No, maybe maybe you'll, maybe you'll link to it. Well, you're, you're able to copy it. You got to pay me royalty rights. See? Yeah, exactly. So you, exactly. He is if pretty you guys cool. want to do a couple more questions, that's that's awesome. If not, that's fine too. Yeah, but yeah. No. Right. favorite yeah. military movie I see from Where? Ross Burke and stuff. Oh, here we go. I do like the favorite military movie. What do you um, got? Man, I got, I got a couple. So Spies Like Us. <laughs> <laughs> okay dude that's an all i mean that's a great one it's very realistic too um uh <laughs> right. what was the, oh man uh heartbreak ridge heartbreak ridge is a classic that's a good one and uh i don't know that's about it man i mean obviously you know you've got black hawk down which is a yeah, great movie yeah You've got Private Zero Dark Ryan. Thirty, Saving Private Ryan, all that stuff, and then the HBO series, uh, Zero Dark Thirty. You got Act of Valor, mm -hmm. um, but again, you know none of them, even the realistic ones, aren't realistic. So don't read into that. I'm talking entertainment value, right. but I'm going Spies Like Us. Is spies one. Like Us. What does she have? She's got she a legit a question, question for the stash. For the stash. Where do you keep loaded guns in the house, even if your kids know not we to touch about it without that, their but... friends? Well, one, I don't really allow other kids over my house because I'm a grumpy curmudgeon. Um, no, I mean, when my f kids have friends over the house, they're not allowed to walk around and, and peruse anything. The guns that we keep are either back in our bedroom and closet or up front in the living area like way out of the way where kids are just going to go through a drawer to open up a book or a game or something. Um, my kids are around the guns, exposed to the guns, <clears throat> trained on the guns, taught on the guns. And they know that there are very, very clear specific rules that they're ever even to come in contact with a gun at a friend's house, what to do and, and, and what not to do. So a lot of it's education and then a lot of it is just making sure you, as, as the parent, you're staying switched on and, and know what's going on inside your house and where kids are and what they're doing. But they're more or less all kept up very, very high out right. of the way so that if someone short were to access it, at least they would have to you'd hear them dragging a chair across the floor or something. That's where mine usually goes. It's up on a shelf. Yeah, that pretty much. Yep. Mines are my, mine are inside cabinets that are extremely high. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Thirteen. Cody Schilling, yeah. Full Metal Jacket. Yeah. yeah, we didn't mention that one, but yeah, that's a great one. Thirteen hours. That's, that's, what, a, that's is that the one that's we just great. talked about. That's the one we just talked about. Okay. So I, I was teammates. I was teammates with um, one of the guys, one in particular of the guys in Thirteen Hours. Very very close with. Cody Schilling. Um, so Jessica said not a extra large shirt. So just email Brandon. Yeah, email me info at concealednation.org. LJ stands for long G. Yes, it does, Cody. What do you think about 92X Centurion? I don't even know what that is. It's, to be honest I'm assuming with you. it's a Breda, right? I'm a assuming. Breda 92, like a special one or something. Uh, 
I yeah, if yeah, I don't know. If it is, I, I don't typically like the bread in ninety twos for defensive carry guns, uh not concealed carry guns, and I can go into why if that is happens to be what it is, but that's All my right. personal opinion. Why? Why? Yeah, why? Uh Beretta 92s, uh, one, you know, you can carry them on a double action, single action basis, or you can activate the safety, which the safety is actually reversed for the way it should be. Okay. Right? It's a decocker. Like, or- it's a decocker, and you can put it on safe yeah. fire, okay. but it's actually reversed because the safety decocks the pistol as well. But if you leave it on safe and not on fire, you got to push away to put it to fire, not down. Okay. And then if you're doing any sort of malfunction manipulation or racking the gun, the slingshot method of pinching the slide was actually developed for the 92s. Okay. Because the the old method of the handover rack on a slide was accidentally manipulating that safety, clicking it down on the, on the safe. So when it comes back. So when you go, you're, you're getting you're nothing. On safe. You're on safe. So they were pinching it to get their thumb underneath the safety mm-hmm. and rack it which this is not uh, ergonomically as functional as this. Right. Huh. Um, and then felt recoil the gun because the slide axis ratio, or, you know, the slide, how it sits over the bore is not as good. So it's got more felt recoil, blah, 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 blah. It's all very technical. No, this is, I mean, it's stuff I've never heard before. That's kind of good to know. <laughs> um, I saw something come across. Awesome. Awesome. Using guns and kids. What will you toast to? Do is it a clean toast or a dirty toast? What does that mean? I don't know what that means. What's like, a clean toast or a dirty toast? The glass is empty, dude. What are you talking about? All right, about? here's here's one toast. This I, is I, I, I have a little this uh, one of my I, cleaner toast. There you go. Like, That's good enough. This right. is one of my cleaner toasts. To guns that shoot straight, parachutes that inflate. Women in demo that blow great. Here's the big tits. <laughs> Cheers. Gross. Slancha. All right. Here you go. It's got to be one for you because favorite location you've been to station visited while active. Um, I've never been stationed in any nice places. Uh, I I did some work in Thailand. That was I love Thailand. That was really cool. Um. The Middle East all sucks. <laughs> so pretty much it all sucks. I was generally. based in I was based in Abu Dhabi uh, for a while. Obviously, living in uh, in the United Arab Emirates, it's a, a very nice uh, first world country, but it is still the Middle East. But we had a pretty nice quality of life there while you know while we were living. So my family got to live there with me, and I would pop out from the United Arab Emirates to the region. So that was a pretty good place. Um. Some areas of Central and South America have their pros. They also have their cons. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if, uh, if I was going there, it was pretty much for a shitty reason. So so last question. Last question before we wrap this up. <laughs> I think teachers should be allowed to carry in schools. So this is a good question. Okay. This is a really good question. Well, and we'll end it at that. No more questions. And this is coming from a very, very pro, pro gun, pro training, pro firearm guy. Uh-oh. I, as, as a general statement, I say no. And here's why. Hear me out. If, if you want to do it on a sort of case by case basis, okay, fine. Someone like me becomes a teacher in elementary school. Cool. These are teachers, they are not soldiers cops warriors they went into a teaching profession the amount of time and training that you have to dedicate to be proficient at defending your own life not to mention someone else's life is more or less a full-time job on its own and these are teachers right they're they've become teachers to teach kids if the the state or the school or the parish county whatever were to mandate rules to make sure that the teachers went through an appropriate amount of firearms training, which is not a one day, eight hour course Mm -hmm. and receive an appropriate amount of 
regular sustainment training to carry their gun and achieve a certain standard and qualification, then maybe. But financially and time-wise, that'll never happen. That'll never happen. I work extremely closely with the public school systems in the area that I live in. And they have a hard time fitting me in sometimes for a 30 minute to one hour, um, you know, stop the bleed clinic for free oh, yeah. because they are so they busy. Just don't allow it. Right. right. They're teachers. They are not law enforcement. So I personally, would I love to see them armed? Would I love them to see them trained to that level? Yes, I would. I'd love to say, yep, they're going to train every month. And they're going to carry and they're going to receive a whole, you know, week, two weeks of firearms training, et cetera, but it'll never happen. So I think what would be required for it to happen to be acceptable for them to carry in schools is unrealistic. Therefore, I don't think they should carry in schools. Right. Good point. Abu Dhabi, all, oh, but that's where poor Nala always was shipped by Garfield. <laughs> not following that I, I think medical staff should be able to carry what do you mean Garfield is my spirit animal awesome stuff. so Ross you can watch this again if you want again you're in the area so be in touch with him for training uh, we're going to do this every Monday and Thursday is that right yeah, I think I think what we'll probably end up doing is having a guest or two on Mondays, and yeah. then Thursdays will kind of be open to everything, and maybe a little shorter because these these Monday sessions have turned out to be about two hours. Yeah, so um, at least try to try for Monday and Thursdays, and uh, you know we'll have guests on. Maybe we'll bring this guy on every once in a while. I mean, if you like me, say yes, I want him back. Yeah, if you don't. Shut the fuck yeah. up. No. Who wants Greg back? So if you guys want Greg back, just leave a comment and say yeah. yes. Exactly. Bring Greg back. Exactly. If we don't see at least I'm not he's usually here drinking with me anyway. So like I I'll mean, just be in the background behind yeah. the camera heckling. He's be right over here. <laughs> yeah. You'll be the heckler. Yeah. Time. So Jessica, we're playing with the times. Um, yeah. We're figuring out what works best for anybody. So we're trying. It's it's difficult because we're in we're under the whole quarantine thing, and a lot of people aren't at work, so like dinner times are different, and everything is kind of. Oh, Jessica wants you back. Yeah, I'm Greg. Uh, Tara Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I can't. I can't believe you're still watching, bro. <laughs> I know that's hilarious. He loves me. He really hey, loves me. I'm Greg. Before we go, before right. we go, you guys can can finish up with whatever you want, but. Uh, the two sponsors today, Better Holsters, Underwood Ammo, uh, Underwood Ammo. We want to thank them. Yes. Um, two great companies with great people that run them and employees. They have great products, so be sure to check them out. Vetterholsters.com and UnderwoodAmmo.com. Uh, check them out, see what they have to offer, and thank them for being the sponsor for today's video. Yep. All right, so we'll see y'all Thursday at either – I don't know, five, six, seven o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, between, between five and seven Just Eastern Time. We'll, we'll we'll all post something beforehand to give at least like a thirty minute heads up. I would say. Right. Follow his yeah. Facebook page. Follow my Facebook page. You'll figure out what time it is, and we're still figuring it out. So follow Concealed Nation. Don't follow USA Carry. It's a bunch yeah. of. Yeah. 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 You want to follow? He's got real. some no talent ass clown on there. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> no, Greg, it, it was it was awesome having you on. Really, thank you, we, Brad. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, I had I had a really good time. You're you're obviously very very knowledgeable with this stuff. Um, so any anytime you want to come on, I know I know Luke's gonna be like, hey, what are we doing next week? Let's have Greg back on. <laughs> <laughs> He's not doing anything. He's quarantined too. So. <laughs> I, I, you know, I will say, cool, man. I joke around this uh, around a lot because I'm a firm believer. No one should ever take themselves too seriously. No, you know, um, but I, I do love this. I'm passionate about it. And the more information that I can get out from people who are willing to accept that information, the better. I, I'm one of those people. If I don't know the answer or if it's not in my wheelhouse in my lane, I'll tell you, I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I've, I've been blessed in my life with, uh, you know, a certain amount of, 
uh, with my, my, my training and my real world experience to help validate or unvalidate some of that training. And if I can give it to other people to enhance their ability, I mean, yeah. really that's kind of what I've turned my life into, uh, when I've left this, you know, the, the, the service and, um, that's what I do now via, you know, shooting type stuff and, and, you know, jujitsu and combative type yeah. stuff. And that's, love- that's the thing you have, you have a lot of this real world experience that, that a lot of people that are watching Luke and I don't have. So it's, it's very valuable information and we appreciate you being able to, you know, contribute that information and answer all these questions. And we had a lot of awesome questions tonight. Right. Really, really good questions. Good stuff. All right. Well, see y'all next Thursday, right? Las Vidania. Slancha. 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 Yeah, we'll be here Thursday. Obrigado. All Cheers. Right. Hey, that was Portuguese. Oh, he knows that. My, my, my wife's from Brazil. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Muito prazer. Yeah. She'll, uh, she'll never come on here, but, yeah, she's from Brazil. <laughs> she's tell, her, a... uh, tell her Belleza. Huh? Belleza. Belleza? Belleza. What is that? It means, like, uh, it's, it's, it's <laughs> slang for, like, you know, they say it when they're getting, when they're meeting up and stuff. Like, hey, but yeah, it's a, okay, but so it, it's I right. think, I think it like virtually translates into beautiful. Oh. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. So turn. All right. I'll, I'll remember it. I'll say to her. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Cool. All right. See everybody. Somebody's going to win a hat and a shirt. So uh, thanks for the questions. Visit the sponsors. We'll see you next Thursday, huh? This Thursday. Well, next Thursday. Yeah, it's, it is, is the is, next Thursday. Isn't it Monday? It's the next Thursday. It's this Thursday. It's He's, this Thursday. Whatever. <laughs> we'll see you this Thursday. I've been Wait, drinking. Like, what are, what we'll see you <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Turn it off. All right, guys. Thank you so much yeah. for joining us. Bye.